Hello and welcome to another Ricky Gervais show with me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. Alright. The ninth in a series of twelve podcasts we're doing for free. Absolutely free of charge. We're getting, um, we've, we've already done over sort of two and a half million downloads. We'll probably do four million downloads by the end of the series. If I had a quid. I oh. don't even want to discuss it, Rick. You are gutted, I'm aren't you? absolutely furious, because I said to you when we studied this, I said, why, why, you were going, oh, let's give something free back to the fans, and I was saying, it's not worth it, they don't deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, you demanded it, and I wanted you to did. pay, I wanted to, I wanted to charge crazy money for I've it. I've been a fool. We've had about, r something like 6,000 emails as well. If we could uh, channel this to good, because you know yeah. what I mean, every, th this internet has been set up, billions and billions and billions of dollars go f uh, on this, uh, uh, um, cyber highway, back and forth, doing doing good stuff, communicating, sending people into space, commerce, and people, hundreds of thousands of people are sending me pictures of Carl as a monkey. I know, exactly. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's not what this, this system was created for. Thank you for all your uh, emails as well. That costs us as well, a little bit, because they're going through the website, which costs us a little bit of money. Well, it also costs me my precious time, <laughs> having to wade through the crap <laughs> that gets sent to us. Thanks to, uh, uh Kieran, um, Gabriel from Merseyside, who sent me a picture of, uh, Carl as Bruce Willis. It's the effort. They're, we'll put all these up on the website. Um, David Weinstein has, uh, has started his own t-shirt range, I Could Eat a Knob at Night, and, uh, Paul Devon has sent me this caricature of Carl, and it's brilliant. Again, I think they're wasting their energies. It's actually a brilliant painting of a little round, bald-headed mank, some sort of, like, freak creature. Yeah. Whereas he could have done a beautiful painting, but, but thanks to all those- I, uh, there's, I, I mean, I have actually waded through the emails, and I, obviously, again, like Ricky, I echo the thanks for sending in all the different questions and comments about the show, um, and there's so many, it's impossible to obviously even reply to them or talk about them, but a couple of that have struck me, uh, Emily from New York has asked, uh, Carl this, Carl, if you were on a, a, a sinking ship, or you were in a, a burning building, and you were with, uh, myself and Ricky, but you could only save one of us, I don't know why, that's the case, but you can only save one of us. Yeah. Who would you save? Would it Is be it, Ricky or would it be me? I think it's a two-man dinghy. Right, okay. Possibly. And we're, we're trapped and he knows that if he stays there to get both our legs out from under this thing. <laughs> the girder. Yeah, he forms. dies. So he's got, so he's, he's got room, he's got time to save one. It's obviously me. Um, it's hard to say, innit, at this point. What, because Steve's situation. in the room, you mean? Well, no, <laughs> just, just because we, we don't know what, what the situation is. Okay, well, let's say we're on a, we're on a sinking ship, all right? So you're gonna have to rescue one of us, drag us into the dinghy. It's, it's going under. You know, you know, in 30 seconds, okay, this ship's gonna go under and drag you down and you're gonna die, right? Yeah. Uh, and our legs are trapped and you've got enough time to <laughs> untangle one set of legs. <laughs> Whose legs do you untangle? Now, just because my legs are long does not necessarily mean it's more complicated. No, it's exactly the same amount of time. Just have to make a choice. Terrible. A terrible choice that Steve would would not, um, you know, hate you for. Well, I, no, listen, this is- He won't be around for long, he's gonna drown in 30 seconds, well, forget him. <laughs> say, bear in mind this, Carl, you are gonna be stuck in a dinghy with Ricky Gervais and who knows how long that's gonna take. Yeah. Think of all the head squeezing that's gonna be going on, the comments, the wind up- And do you honestly think that he's gonna, if there's any provisions, that he's gonna split them evenly with you? <laughs> I mean, he's gonna have drunk all the water, and it's only gonna be about half an hour in. <laughs> the food's gonna be gone. Look at his gut. Look how much, you know, of the, oh. of the food he's gonna have to eat. The baked beans that you've got on board. Come Whereas on. me, you know how generous I am. I'm always sort of oh, helping there you there we out. go, Carl. He's, I think he's, uh, put the nail in his own coffin there. You know how generous I am, Carl. Let's talk about that, Carl. Come on, think about that one. Yeah, I mean, have, have you forgot about that, Steve? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? The time, the time when... We went for a coffee, and um, we had to have a bit of a heated debate about the 50 pence change. <laughs> yeah, you owed me 50p, oh, and you it. decided you didn't want to give it to me because it was only 50p. And mm. my point was, it's not a question of 50p, it's the fact that it's not your decision to decide not to give it to me. If I wanted to be generous, that's my decision, but you can't go, oh, it's only 50p, well, Steve. It's my decision, it was But you just, you just given him a free keg of beer. Yeah. Uh, no, no, but yes, but that was, that did not come to you, and you didn't pay for the free keg of beer, it was a promotional thing that was sent to you. Matter. It's the same thing as the way I gave Suzanne my leaving present from my last job. A lot of people may not be aware of this if they haven't heard us talking about it before, yes, but you had a gift from your work as you were leaving after yeah. however many years of service, yeah. which you then gave straight to your girlfriend without telling her that it had been received from uh, people at work. Doesn't matter, she wanted a camera. It's the same thing as you. You wanted that lager that I got for free. It hasn't yeah. cost you anything. It doesn't matter where I got it from. So you now decide, because you've given me a free credit lager, that you can now say, oh, actually, I'm not, uh, you know, in the future, I'll just take your money, Steve, on a whim. 
Well, L- listen, I'm Tom just... Argonauts, you're rocking the dinghy. Carl, <laughs> have some of my cheese. <laughs> imagine if he would- imagine he would ever say that. Can you imagine him ever, ever offering you any of his cheese? Are you gonna save Carl, mate? I, I don't wanna say. Can we say on the website? Can you just do a little explanation of why on the website? Can they- we we'll think about it and- I might do a sort of a- a for and against or something and then sort of- so the conclusion is. Okay, alright. Something like that. Go all to right. rickygervais.com. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Hasta la vista, baby. I'll be back. I'm here to tell you about Friday Night Comedies on Channel 4. There's three great comedies. New Green Wing, it's nearly ready. My name is Earl and the It Crowd. The great new comedy from creator of Father Ted. Get your ass to Mars. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4. Switch it on. I'll be back. Uzi 9 millimeter. Cause they did a divorce. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Well, I've been waiting for this for a week. Um, it's a regular feature now. When uh, we read from Carl's diary, Carl decided to keep a diary. He's gone through with it. I can see it there. It's massive. It's a huge desk diary that he has to carry around uh, with him. And uh, he, uh, is, the pages are getting full up. You're, you're really keeping to this. Yeah. Right, it, this is uh, extracts from Carl's diary. Did podcast and went for an Italian with Ricky and Steve. Italian place is good. We've been there a few times. I always have the same thing, spaghetti. Can't remember what everyone else had. Last time we went there, Steve had little octopuses with pasta. You could see that they were octopuses. They hadn't been cut up or anything. My rule is that I only eat stuff that looks nice when it's alive. <laughs> A cow, a chicken, some fish. An octopus is an odd-looking thing alive. Even worse when it's dead and limp. It looks like it just shouldn't have been sat in the spaghetti. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree with that. <laughs> Ricky drew another picture of my head. We've given a few of them away as prizes, but he draws so many of them that they won't be worth as much anymore. <laughs> Everyone will eventually have one. Like those pictures of a boy crying that caused houses to burn down in the 1980s. What does that mean? What are you talking about? Don't you remember the- I mean, if you're listening in America, they might not have made it over there. Is it the- what the- the- what the sort of like, the sugary ones with kids, like, is it Techikov or something? It's just some kid- uh, my auntie Nora had one, and it was just like, a kid with like a blue jumper on and he's- it's like a painting, not a photo. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And he's just crying. Like a chocolate box, really awful sort of sugary. And what happened is it- they found out that a load of houses were being set on fire or burst into flames, whatever, and the weird thing was- Oh, it's bollocks. Every house that burnt down had that photo. Yeah, cos every house had that picture in the <laughs> fucking 70s and 80s. <laughs> Idiot. It's like, we're linking it to sinks. Every house that's ever burnt down had a sink. <laughs> You're talking shit mm. again. Mm. Carry on. Wednesday. Saw a homeless bloke. I'm surprised that no companies have thought about sponsoring the homeless. Something like a clothing company. Give them some clothes that have an advert on the back. Everyone's a winner. Good idea. Not bad, is it? Got on the tube to Camden. Read in a free newspaper that hedgehogs could be gone by 2025. I think I've seen more dead hedgehogs than alive ones anyway, so I don't think I'll miss them. <laughs> Went round to Ricky's house and had a game of pool. It should have been nice and relaxing, but Jane gave me some cake and Ricky said I can't play pool if my hands are all sticky from there, cake. It was the sugar- it was- and it wasn't that either. After he'd finished it, they weren't just sticky, he was licking his fingers, sucking his fingers off, and then was gonna pick up pool cues and touch things and I was thinking, go and wash your hands after licking your hands, you're not a cat. This turned into an argument when I said I didn't want to wash my hands. Why didn't he? Disgusting. He goes for a piss all the time without washing his hands and then <laughs> squeezes my head. I know I'd prefer to have lemon cake crumbs on my head than knob juice. I was gonna do a crossword, but I'm tired and have learnt enough today. What have you learnt? Well, the stuff about hedgehogs and that. <laughs> 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 oh, God. Was on my way to my mates and I got on a train. Got close to a station but realised I needed a wee. Was about to go in a cubicle when a blind man with a dog who was bumbling his way through the walkway came around. I said, are you after the toilet? He said, yeah. I said, it's on your right. I shouldn't have let him go first as he took ages and it would be my stop soon. The dog waited outside the cubicle. I was gonna stroke it, but then I remembered someone telling me that you shouldn't. Don't know why, why not? That is. Because something to do with uh the owner should be the only one who who sort of deals with that dog 
And you shouldn't. F- so well, you shouldn't stroke it because you'll cover it in fucking lemon cake. <laughs> no, but, but just because you know, if you if you stroke it and that, it, it might like like me and want to go off with me, and he'll come out and be lost and stuff. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm not totally sure, but I just thought. Are you not, uh... The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. A few people have sent this in, including Paul the Party Animal Parker. I wonder if um, anyone else in his school. I mean, for some reason, we've just assumed he's in school. I don't think there's any actual proof of that. But do I, you reckon, think- I reckon he left in June, and he's doing sort of bits and pieces, but he's still not a party animal. Do you think, I mean, do you think he can hold down a job? Is he just partying so hard that- He can hold down a job, um, he often arrives late. Sure. And the, and the boss who's in over will go, Parker, you're late again! He goes, yeah, talk to the hand. Yeah. I think that he's the sort of guy that he, you know, he'll just happily say, listen, I can, I survive on four hours sleep. Yeah. Sometimes I go to work, I've not slept at all. But I think he comes in with his, uh, uh, uh headphones blaring, right, on a, on a skateboard, yeah. and the bloke goes up to him, the old bloke, right, the old fuddy-duddy bloke goes, you, you stupid idiot, you can't, there, and then he goes, he goes, chill out, man, and in two minutes, he's got him dancing. <laughs> oh, I know what he's like. <laughs> yeah, he is just like, he just can't resist it, because he's yeah. just, he's, he's just a fun guy. Yeah. Anyway, Paul and a few other people have sent in this piece of information they've discovered um, from one of the more respected news networks. Um, the headline is this, Female Kidney Turns Lumberjack Onto Housework. Right. Now, a Croatian lumberjack apparently has claimed that he started enjoying housework and knitting after he was given a female kidney. He claims he's going to sue his local health authority because he says he's become a laughing stock. Um, he used to enjoy heavy drinking sessions and things. Uh, the kidney transplant saved his life, but they never warned me about the side effects. I've developed a strange passion for female jobs, like ironing, sewing, washing dishes, sorting clothes in wardrobes, and even knitting. Well, if he likes it, what's the problem? It's no. nonsense. It's nonsense. Hold on, though. What makes me laugh is he's become a laughing stock. So what do you do when you become a laughing stock? Tell the newspapers. <laughs> well, yeah. Tell the newspapers about it, because then that would keep it completely under wraps. Then. But it's the sort of medical nonsense that Carl would normally come out with. Absolutely. That, that, that you know, you take on the personality of the person who gave you their blood. <laughs> exactly. It's like those old sto- horror stories, you know, you get given a murderer's hand. Yeah. And you go around killing. But, but there can be certain medical things that would change the way you think and would change you as, as a person. Say, like, how they can do, um, face transplants now. Yeah. Right? I mean, I, I don't quite understand how this face transplants work because do you get a choice of who, who you have? If if you have something done to your face and you go, you know, it's burnt or whatever, or something happens to you, and you need well, a people, face transplant. Well, if you change, if you totally changed your appearance, then you would eventually change because of how people reacted to you. Yeah, but I, so I if mean, you gave yourself the head of an elephant, soon you wouldn't you wouldn't be yourself. But because I wouldn't of the, have it. I wouldn't have that. That's what I'm saying. If they had a catalogue. Yeah. And they said, here's some faces you can have, pick which one you want. Yeah. Would you be looked upon badly if you go, do you know what? I don't really like the look of any of them. Can I just wait for a better face? Or at this moment in time, have you just got to take what's on offer? Carl, there's no one looking through catalogues at faces they might be able to have in No, they do tra- now because of the face transplant thing. But who are these people putting their face up for, uh, they wait till someone- Yeah, I know, but at some point, well, I tell you what, I would not have a face transplant if I haven't seen the face before I'm gonna have it. You- <laughs> You had to- <laughs> I wanna see what I'm having. Because I could end up with anything. You mentioned elephant's head. What- do you know what I mean? Whose head are they gonna use? Is it the latest thing that's died? Oh, well, this got run over before. Yeah, I'll stick this on your head. But <laughs> where did this come from? Where is <laughs> his people? mind? The where, where are these faces queuing up to be popped on a skull? Where do you think they have got time to- to put well, all these- Maybe this is why it won't catch on. I don't know. <laughs> this is extraordinary. You've created in your own head the existence of this pamphlet, and now you're defending it even though we don't know it even exists. And you're this skull on a- on a hospital bed going, I'm not having that, I don't like the look of him, he looks a bit shifty, oh, I don't like that, oh no. Can I ask this now? Let's say you- we were both- we'd passed away sadly in something terribly tragic. Um, the nation's it mourned, you know, it's, it's terrible, it's like one of the great national disasters, but you- at the same time, you survived the accident, okay, but your face is hideously disfigured. You can take either Ricky's face or mine to have. I'm surprised you're asking this though, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, it's just, it doesn't seem like any of them is like a great option. Oh, thanks. And this is what I'm saying about the catalogue. If, th- if those two were on offer, I might go, do you know what? Pop in again tomorrow. <laughs> Bring in another booklet. <laughs> the Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited.
This is from Anne Marie Melvin in Amsterdam. She says that she loves the podcast. She listens with her seven months old baby. Um, that cannot be a good idea. And she says this to you, Carl. If you had children, what is the most important lesson you'd want to teach them? Uh, I mean, in a way, if you sort of look after a kid too much, it doesn't learn that much. But if you let it learn by its mistakes, it'll probably grow up all right. But there are it's some like, mistakes you can't afford it to make to learn from. Yeah. Driving a car ro the wrong way down a motorway. Um, test testing if the fire really is hot. No, but say like the time- Does, does broken glass really taste horrible? These are lessons you don't want it to learn from mistakes. Yeah, you, you can tell them that. Yeah, but, but what I mean is, but what I mean is there's, there's certain things that- I, I just think there was a kid who grew up in our- in our avenue, right, on the estate, who- when it was born, right, we kind of thought it's got no chance, this kid, because- because its man was- was a bit of a rumman. Um, you know- A rumman? Where, where's that? No, just- just like, you know, she like going out and having a fag and like having a drink and she's never at home. It's the one who had the- the horse in the house. Sure. Right? Which I don't want to go over. Sure. It's old news, It's yeah. out there, isn't it? If you want to find out about the horse in the house. <laughs> but, uh, she had a kid and everyone was pretty surprised when they saw it because it was a good looking kid. Mm. Right? Which was a surprise because like, you know, the man wasn't that good looking, the dad was a bit rough. But mm. it, it came out and she was showing it around, around the avenue going, look at this I've had. Um, <laughs> she was she was chuffed with it because it's probably like one of the newest things she's ever had because everything else was always sort of second down second and what have yeah. you. But suddenly she's got this brand new little baby, right? Anyway, as it grew up, right, those looks went. <laughs> right. And I'm not talking getting old. I'm talking by the age of about three. <laughs> it looked <laughs> it looked rough already, right? And all that that just happened because. <laughs> That's that's the life it was in, right? Yeah. So like it, it used to, it had like a patchy head. Um, it's hair. It, it what? It had a patchy head. A patchy head. It's just sort of. Uh, sort it wasn't. Of just it it wasn't a North American Indian. What do you mean? A uh, patchy head. Just just his hair was patchy. He used to chase sort of cars and stuff. <laughs> it's cars. It's, sorry. It, what, what do you mean? It just that's what he did for his. The, sorry. Did she let it get raised by wolves? <laughs> no. <laughs> but but all I'm saying is that at the end of the day. <laughs> What is it that makes a person? Do you know what I mean? Now, I don't know what state he's in now, but maybe he learned all his mistakes by the age of four. I'm guessing he's not chasing cars now, but at least he's done it. I'm <laughs> guessing he is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? At least he can go, yeah, I've been there, done that, and you don't go back to it, and you can get away with doing dafter things when you're a kid, can't you? I nearly killed a man once, right? <laughs> okay, right. Did well, you? that time when I was in, in <laughs> Wales, and I was having a walk with my dad on the cliffs and that, yeah. and I just picked up a big rock, Right, chucked it off the edge, and as I chucked it off the edge, I noticed the fellow was walking down below. Jeez! And I missed his head by like inches. Now, I've never chucked a rock off a bridge or like off a cliff or anything. And right? it only took one man to almost lose his life for you to learn that lesson. Yeah, but that's how you learn your lessons. Yeah. Isn't it? See, a lot of people would have said that maybe your dad should have said, "Hey, Carl, what are you doing?" No, but he didn't know I was doing it. I didn't say I'm going to chuck this off here. I just picked it up and chucked it. And like, as I let go of it, I noticed a fellow was down there. You live and you learn. That's a little <laughs> mantra. Right? right. You live okay. and you learn. So the woman who's had the kid, sort of look after it, feed it, <laughs> make sure it's got shoes and that, <laughs> but let it roam about. <laughs> That's great. There's the advice for you, Anne Marie. I love that. Good luck. Just let your seven-month-old baby roam about. <laughs> Hey, fool! Don't give me no back chat, sucker! I ain't here to mess with you, I ain't getting in no plane! I'm here to tell you all about Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. Hmm. There's three great new comedies. New Green Wing, Yeah, Fool, That's Nearly Ready, My Name is Earl, and The Egg Crowd. They're great new comedy from the creator of Father Ted, sucker. Friday Night Comedy, this Friday on Channel 4, fool. Switch it on, or I'll be around your house. You stay up all night shivering, cause you be so mad scared. Fool. Carl, a lot of people are absolutely fascinated to find out how you met uh, Suzanne, your girlfriend of how long? Uh, ages. Yeah. Um, and they just, they, they can't comprehend how, well, I suppose that there's any woman out there. Well, there's someone who, for everyone, isn't there? Yeah. That's always my, my thing. And it's reassuring, I think. You know, we chatted about the face transplants and that. 
you know, there's a face for everyone. Philosophy, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, it's really unbelievable. No, there is someone for everyone, no matter what, what yeah. condition you're in or whatever. Yeah. Um, cause there's a, I read on the email, someone emailed in an old Chinese proverb. Um. Is it old though? <laughs> <laughs> you know, the Chinese proverbs don't age well. Um, it's something about, uh, oh, everyone, everything, no matter what it is, has got one talent. Right? And that's the same way in a relationship, isn't it? That everyone, you know, there's always someone out there and that. I like the Chinese, there's another Chinese proverb that I learned on, on an email. Go on. Um, he who cuts the wood up warms himself twice. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. And then someone sent in that one about, um, too many Chinese cooks spoil the broth. <laughs> Why, well, why is, well that's, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know who slipped the word Chinese in there, but <laughs> I heard it was too many cooks. Well it was all, it was just all sort of Chinese proverbs and that. One of my favourite, um, uh, 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 on the same subject is, um, a camel is a horse designed by committee. What do you mean? Well, it, I mean it's having a go at the camel and it shouldn't, but it's just, you know, it's just, it's just a metaphor. And if you wanted to design a horse and you had that vision, but you let you let twelve people in the room have their say, it wouldn't come out as you wanted it to do, and it wouldn't be as good. A vision is more perfect than committee, because everyone having their say, it becomes anodyne, it becomes compromised. Whereas the best things you can do is have an idea and have a vision and auteur that. Rick, can I just say now, I can tell from his look that he's thinking which committee designed the camel. <laughs> Well, I'd just say, I'd say, who, who, why would you request the ump bit? Because <laughs> that's just going to get in the way, isn't it? I, this is, it? I mean, I've always, I've always said that about a lot of animals. It's like we, we've doubled up on a lot of them. We've chatted about elephants and mammoths, one or the other. <laughs> and that's the same with a, with a camel. I'd have that up there as what what they're doing. They were good years ago in the Jesus times and that. Don't need them now. You know what I mean? We've moved on. Well, not people who use camels to cross deserts. What other- I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw some animals at you, and you tell how, how, how you'd have improved them if you'd have been designing them. Okay? Mm -hmm. The octopus. So I, I can now go back, I can look at them and go, what are they doing? And wh wh where have they gone wrong? What's up with you? Wh wh how could you improve it? Like the camel, you'd go lose the ump. I'd probably- I'd probably give it a bit more of a body. <laughs> Cut down on the arms. Um. And, and give it some bones, because I don't understand all this, it getting in a jar is, is good. When does it want to get in a jar? <laughs> it says- Well it, it only wants to get in a jar according <laughs> to your stories. No, but there's something that says it can get in a jar because it hasn't got any bones, but yeah. I don't know why it'd want to do that in the first place. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> I can't even begin to answer that. Once again, you've, you've said, you've claimed that you've read that they like to get in jars. <laughs> I mean, how do they know that octopus <laughs> like to get in jars? Oh, God, you can improve on an octopus. Millions and millions of years of evolution making it perfect for its surroundings. Okay, another animal for you then, Carl. Um, uh, giraffe? Um, what, what are they adding to, to the world? What are they doing? Well, it's not about what they add to the world, no, but is I it? Thought, but I thought that's what everything's about. It's about things are here for a reason. Well, they, well they, no, because they work. The only reason is that they survived. They passed on their genetic material and evolved and was chosen by by nature. It was but selected. There, but there seems to be a lot. The, the, of the reason they're here is because they didn't die. That's it. No, but there seem to be a lot of animals that are like. Do you it's, think there's a lot of cheating? Is that what you're saying? Well, there's I'm a just lot saying of doubling there just seems up. to be a lot of doubling up. Yeah. So and you want you want you 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 get it down to like eight animals that represented. All of it. So oh, it. Okay, who would get in your in your team? You can choose no, eight well, this animals. Is, this is what I'm saying. If I was Noah, I mm. would have gone like, hang on a minute. We've, I've just seen something that looks a bit like this. <laughs> <laughs> Let it drown and have a clear out. <laughs> but he didn't. He was messing about saving everything. He was instructed by God to save everything. Yeah. To be fair to him. Yeah, but if he's been given that job for me, he's sort of manager of that job. So you, be, so you believe. With Noah as well. You well, believe you believe Noah happened as well, and he built a boat big enough to to catch two of every species. You actually believe that as fact, dear? Well, it's it's out there in book form. Oh, Brilliant. Uh, all right. We haven't answered the question that we started with. How did you meet Suzanne? Does that work? Thanks. 
There was this um, airline, and um, it's having a lot of problems. And, and a what, lot of pilots the... too tall? Yeah, the cabin was so tiny. Only bananas were allowed in the cockpit for fuel. <laughs> anyway, yeah. there, there was a lot of strikes going on, right? Sure. Because um, I don't know what it was about. It was over money or whatever. Yes. And the well, get get someone that doesn't need money. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. but well, but what else could you pay something in? Well, Rick, I mean, peanuts. Would... So, okay, peanuts or, or fruit. Yeah. So anyway, the the boss. Of the airline, the, oh. he had like one pilot who he could trust, right? And that was his son. Right. Mm. But the problem is with a lot of these planes, mm. you need two pilots. Of course right? you do. And he was like, if only I had two sons. But he didn't, there's no point harping on about it. Right? Sure. Is as, it, as, this a, he runs an airline? He runs an airline, yeah. But how many pilots are there? Because there must be loads. No, there's loads, but the problem is a lot of them are going on strike. Oh. And each week you can see that we're struggling here. We but how can they get, but if they, yeah, but it's just, it was just the pilots that were striking, was it? Yeah, the pilots were striking, yeah. So the, all the ground staff and luggage handlers and all that was okay in the cab? They, they were fine, it's just pilots right. were, were not pilots. happy with the deal and what have you. Yeah. Well, just, just close it down. No, anyway, well, you can't do that, no, Rick. Of course you can't. It's costing them a fortune just, if you close it down. Yeah, yeah, but what, one plane's not gonna make a difference in an airline, is it? No, 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 it's no, all the planes. It's all the planes, mate. Yeah, I know, exactly, so if he's only got one person he can trust, knock it on the head. <laughs> no, 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 what's the point? You've gotta keep going. You can't just nip stuff in the bud like that. If you, if you got a dream, keep it alive. I know, but not with one plane and your son. So so anyway, I don't know. Well, like, but that's that's the least of his problems, Rick, because he's got his son who's a brilliant pilot, he's the only guy he can trust, but it, it takes two people to fly Well, you the can't plane. fly then. So, the son, he's mm. flying the planes and that, he's getting worried for his dad because of his business, it's falling sure. apart. He's like, anyway, listen. Well, one plane won't make any difference. Don't worry it? about it, we've found someone who you can work with. Um, okay. And he's like, but I, I get past the picket line because, you know, they know I'm your son anyway and they'll leave me alone, but any other pilot, you're going to start giving him grief. They're tearing him to shreds, yeah. He said, don't worry about it. Unless he could swing over the heads of all the strikers. He said he's staying over at near the sort of quarantine area where oh. all the animals are kept oh, and yeah, stuff. Right, okay. They won't be looking in there, they won't no. bother. No. So he's like, alright. Uh, there's no animal you, that could be a co-pilot, that's why. I'll see you, uh, he'll meet up with you in the cockpit. Right. He'll meet up in the cockpit, yeah, sure. So anyway, he gets in there, he meets them. At first, little bit of a shock who he's going to be working with, but why? he's thinking, as long as I can keep my dad's business alive, I can Not keep a job. Not with one plane. Not so, with one plane. anyway, what happens is, the strike's going on, he's flying, he's yeah. got his mate with him flying, helping out. Who's his mate? What's his the mate's flights, name? The flights are brilliant, right? Everybody's loving them, they can't believe how smooth they are. Sure. The, mm. You know, the shares are going through the roof, everybody's like, what? Oh, what is this plane? one plane? This oh, one plane one they've plane? got. one plane? That wouldn't make any difference! Everyone's saying, you know, it's a, it's only a small plane, but it's worth getting on there. And it's a can. small plane sure, as well. Because it's a great, it's a great oh, experience. gone under, I'd have thought. There's so no anyway, way they can keep that. Alive. Apparently they can. So they're keeping yeah. this, uh, this plane up in the air and what have you, and everybody's, yeah. you know, booking the holidays. It's almost like the favourite bit of the holiday, they're loving the flights that much. Why? It's just, because, because it's really good flight. It's just I a great, don't it's understand a great flight. what difference. Apparently it's a great flight. It it's makes. Just, it's so, so anyway. understand what difference it makes. Everyone's happy. Then one day mm. what happens is a little bit of, a uh, little bit of a problem. Oh uh, dear. You're not, you're not gonna tell us that, that sort of co, co-pilot Coco is, he's not able to make it to work, is he? Well, well, what well, happened is, uh, one woman who was on the, on the plane got a bit peckish, right? Right. And said, uh, said to the air hostess woman, said, I'm a little bit peckish, have you got any sort of nibbles and that? She went, uh, no, I've got, got a sandwich. She said, I don't really want a sandwich, you want some, you know, like the usual stuff that planes give out, just like nuts, a bag of nuts or something. Well, nuts, are, yeah. are they not giving those out yet? So, no, they don't give it for some reason. She was like, look, we've, <laughs> we've stopped giving out the nuts. We can get you That's a sandwich. Strange. And the woman's yeah. like, I don't want a sandwich, yeah. I just want some nuts. Yeah, Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. A sandwich is quite a big meal and what have you. I just yeah. want some nibbles, want some nuts. Well, no, that's not available. So Done. I can't, End of story. Can't get you nuts. She said, well, why aren't there any nuts? She said, well, you know, the airlines had problems and stuff, and maybe that was one of the cutbacks. We've never took the nuts back on. Yeah, sure. So, she wouldn't just leave it, she wanted her nuts, right? She's having a lovely flight and everything, she said, I can't, cannot complain about the flight, the <laughs> no, flight sure. is brilliant. Yeah. Whoever's yeah. up there flying this plane is doing she's, a dynamite job. She's doing job. a great job, but I need some nuts. Right. Anyway, so the woman there said, aren't there aren't any. Very any demanding nuts. woman. There aren't any. <laughs> very demanding woman. There aren't any. Look, she's paid big money, right, she's probably in first class, she wants nuts, she's gonna nah, get nuts. there aren't any, leave it. Leave if she it. has to force her way into the cabin to get nuts, she's gonna get well, nuts. Well, she can't go there because she'll be shot. Because so with, with, with security problems and that, there's no way she could ever go to the cockpit. That, it, that would never happen. So she said, well, you're saying there aren't any nuts. She yeah. said, but earlier, I saw you put a tray outside the cockpit, right? It had a sandwich on it, two Cokes, and two bags of nuts. Right. She said, so you're saying there aren't any, but the pilot's getting Well, there aren't any now. That was the last two packets. Done. No, no. So Let's go home. <laughs> 
So she's going, you can't, can't have any. No, no. We know, she's we going, understand now there's a dispute so, over So nuts. she said, she said, well, well I'm, I'll go and have a word with the pilot myself, because you only put them out there a few minutes ago. You can't have eaten them once. You, so you can't go over. No, no. I know this is it. This yeah. is, she was saying, you cannot go over. She's going, no. listen. Yeah. I'm gonna go over because no, I feel no, like I'm being lied to. No, you can't. So she goes, so no, and, no and the way. pilot can well, hear all this in anyway. chat about the nuts and what have you, and he's thinking, what's going on out there? Yeah. He opens the door, right? Yeah. she gets a glance in, little monkey sat there with headphones. Fucking <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> Well, that's the end of another podcast. Um, do register on rickygervais.com, where we have an email you and tell you, um, what's happening when we finish this run of podcasts. We might have, um, some, uh, downloads. At the moment, we're working on, um, animating all the monkey users. Um, so, uh, look forward to that. The absolute bullshit that is monkey news in all its glory. Um, this was hosted by Positive Internet. Great guys. The great guys that host the world's number one podcast. Cheerio from me, Ricky Gervais, and Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Hello, welcome to the tenth podcast in a series of twelve, Ricky Gervais Show, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And, of course, Carl Pilkington. Right. Now, um, thanks for all your emails. We've really started a community here, I think. Yes. We're all brought together by one aim. The, the the fascination of the brain of Carl Pilkington, yes, basically. Yes, absolutely. There's I mean, thousands of people who are equally as obsessed as we are with it. I d really don't know why it's called the Wicked Gervais Show anymore. I mean, I was I was cynical at the beginning, but it's it's farcical. Um, welcome to the Carl Pilkington Show. Well, people say they'd like to hear more from you and I, but I don't see why when you've got uh, do you this know I feel like, in the room. I feel like the ringmaster, but the real star is the shaved monkey in a jar that <laughs> yes, we bring out. Do you exactly. know what I mean? That, yeah. that, that's it. That's the star of the show, you know. Yeah. Well, we've, uh, we've had loads of emails, actually, and we've had one from, uh, Nige, who's done this brilliant cartoon of Carl on the beach. I, I think we should sell those as postcards. Um, but someone's beaten us to selling, uh, uh, merchandise. If you go to, um, uh, www.cafepress.com forward slash Mr. Pilkington, someone is selling everything with Carl Pilkington's head on it. Now, these are bootleg goods. We're not making any money from it, but I'm strangely proud. I just love to see millions of people wearing a little t-shirt or a baseball cap or drinking out of a mug with his little round head on it. He's made a clock, which is perfect because it fits absolutely, you know what I mean, the sides of the head go right to the edge of the clock because it's perfectly I'd round. like to see maybe as, as well those, um, sort of rubber or plastic face masks that you can buy for Halloween with just Carl's oh. face. Oh, just millions of people <laughs> yeah. would all look like Carl. Oh, that would be amazing. What a world that would be. Cheers for that, love. Yeah, it's Carl Pilkington here, just, uh, telling you about Channel 4 on a Friday. You've got, uh, New Green Wing, right? That's, that's nearly ready. My name is Earl, and, uh, the It Crowd. I mean, sort of being in the comedy business and that, I think it's, it's fair to say I'm qualified to give me opinion, and these three things are funny, so yeah, stay in, watch it, have a good night, have a nice little brew with it, do what you want, at the end of the day, it's your life, innit? See ya. Carl Pilkington! The Ricky Gervais Show. On Guardian Unlimited. Still to come, of course, Monkey News and Carl's Diary, excerpts thereof. I wonder if we should have a jingle for questions for Carl, because there's a lot of questions coming in for Carl. Okay. Oh, chimpanzee, that question's for Carl, you... Yeah, okay, no, <laughs> fair enough, that works. Okay. Um, this is from Jim and Bob in Manchester. Carl, if you could talk to any animal, which one would it be and what would you say to it? Uh. Insect, animal, anything, fish, anything. Well, they said animal, but that's yeah, that's broad well, to animal, anything. Well, no, animal, any creature. Uh, insect is an animal. Yeah, no, but I'm just you know I don't want to get it wrong. I'm just thinking about yeah. There's a lot of stuff out there, isn't there? Um, I'd I'd probably go for the tortoise. Okay. Because it would take a long time to walk away from you while you were talking. <laughs> no, yeah. just because- Most animals would be off straight away. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just because they live for ages, so they'll have loads of stories. They've lived through a lot. You know what I mean? Through wars and stuff. Well, if you get an old one, if you get like an old one, that's about- yeah. Most of them have lived in a box in a garden for 52 years. No, you, but you- but you get some that have been about- and even if it's in a box, oh, yeah. you can over it. They've really travelled, have they? <laughs> yeah. I mean, some well, of them have, well, some of them have experienced more than you. <laughs> yeah. But um, they've broadened their horizons a bit more than you. They could probably teach you a thing or two, yeah. And I'll what just, would you hope to learn from them? Just, just history. <laughs> <laughs> right. From their very specific tortoise perspective. <laughs> Other emails. We've had a lot of questions about time travel. 
people are fascinated about your approach to time travel, and I know we've talked about this in the past, but um, this is a very specific time travel question. If you had a time machine, Carl, to what event in your childhood would you travel back to and why? What's the point in going back to oh, things that you thought? Yeah. No, it's just that it's never as good as it. It's like a place you go on holiday, and you go back thinking it'll be as good as the first time. It never is. So I don't, I don't believe in going back to places. What, do you, what, what do you understand the question as? Uh, do, do, you, do you think they're asking, would you go back like a ghost and spy? Would you go back and you've got um, your childhood back? You are that child again. You're in the body. You are the child, or you've got your adult. Um, head and experiences well, on, you know, you, you Rick, can... Rick, I really don't think Carl was thinking there was any of those variations. <laughs> no, let's be honest, but now that you've flagged them I up... I think he was thinking of him as he is now in school with a cap on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah but Too big for foot. the chairs. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, come on. No, I, I don't think I'd, I would go back. It's all happened now, hasn't it? Yeah, but it's a, an email to a podcast for our own amusement. Well, okay, well... Choose then... an event. Okay, forget the time travel thing. No, hang on, I think, let's clarify one of Ricky's points. What if you could go back and you could live that moment again, how would you do it differently? There's, there's been times where I've gone, oh, that was a bit out of order or whatever, but then you learn from your mistakes, don't you? So I don't want to go back and change stuff, because it's, it's like that thing that they go on about, innit, where they blame the butterfly on an earthquake. You know, it's gonna happen, if it wasn't that butterfly, it's another one. So why, why pass the book? Is what yeah. I'm saying. So you've got no regrets. There's so nothing in your past you'd want to change or what, do differently. What What about if you went back and you spied like a ghost on something? You couldn't change anything, but you could you could have a look at someone and just sort of look like uh, you like know, what? like Ebenezer Scrooge does with the Ghost of Christmas Past. He goes back and he's sort of like looking at himself dancing and stuff. Or what would you do? What would you go back and have a look at? Yeah, but uh, you're oh. asking me to change. I don't want to change. Yes, you're not, not changing. You're just observing. It's impossible. All right, I tell this you question. What. It, this is. Yeah. It's not going to happen. You're not going to have to. Do this. It's impossible. Right. Yeah, I nearly died once, didn't I? On a uh, on an ice pop. Right. Right. Now, maybe if I would have died, I'd say, "Well, let's go back to that," and I won't have an ice pop. You wouldn't be doing the podcast <laughs> if you'd have died. You wouldn't be uh, having this email put to you. What are you? That's talking absurd. About? You're now saying you're rewriting history and then going back to change it. Yeah. There's no need. You, you didn't, didn't die. die. <sighs> well, and what? we've changed it. You can't change anything. You're just gonna go back and watch something. Would you like to go back and watch yourself choking on a Mr. Freeze? No, that's what I'm saying. That's why I wouldn't go back now, cos I'm alright. I haven't had one since. I've learnt a lesson. I'm not missing them ice pops. So... <laughs> I don't think you're making the most of this opportunity to fantasise. I don't see the point in going back in anything. I mean, do you mean go back in time to the oh. point of you can see, like, Rome? in its working day. What, in your childhood? Was Rome about when in your childhood? Were there gladiators well, in your childhood? Well, that's what I'm saying. Everything I've, I've been through, I've been through, so why see it again? Forget it. It was just a nice little question. I mean, that shows the, the lack of imagination right. in Carl right. Pilkington. Can, can your I, mind can't fathom right, well, something unless it's like, you know, got two heads. But I don't see the point in doing something twice. Because the thing is, say if there's one good moment when I was about six that I loved, mm. I'd then have to go through all the other twenty years. Again. Well, why? Why have you imposed that? It's a <laughs> fantasy. Make it up. <laughs> you could go back and come back again. Yeah, whiz back and fast forward 35 years. Nah. Brilliant. No. Like it was on offer. <laughs> like this was really on offer. Move on. Migrant workers in South China are wearing adult diapers on packed trains heading home for the New Year holiday because they've got no access to the toilet. Many supermarkets in this particular part of China have reported a 50% increase in sales of adult nappies for the train trips. Now, what do you make of that, Carl? You're on a long, long train journey. Three hours, four hours. You know there's no toilet. You know you're going to need to go. Pop on a... Why isn't there any toilets? They just aren't on the, the trains. And they're a really long journey. Yeah. How long? Hours. Well, very long in China. It's a big country. I, w I wouldn't... I, I couldn't do that. <laughs> I couldn't... I couldn't do it. I'd, I'd have to hold it in or something. Just like, uh, I mean, when I, when I was a young kid, I don't know how young you are when you wear a nappy and that, but, um, I remember that I didn't like it, doing it in a pair of pants, like that, a pair of nappies <laughs> and that. And I used to have to, uh, even when I was too small to sort of get up on the toilet and that, cos you'd fall in, <laughs> um, my mum knew that I didn't like nappies and that. I used to just go in, in the corner, just near the kitchen, in this thing that, like a, like a litter tray. <laughs> <laughs> that cat's having that. I mean, it, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't <laughs> like that, but, but it's, that's, that's, you know, that's the same sort of idea, and I'd go there, and, uh, <laughs> I'd do me thing, and, uh, you know, my mum used to say, oh, he's, he's going there, don't look at him and that, because it put me off. 
You know, like cats don't like being watched <laughs> when they do it. <laughs> when they go in their litter tray in the kitchen. No, they don't. They don't like it. Look, I tested it what again. What are you, just like a little feral kid, just running around and going to the litter tray, covering it up, and then running up the curtain and eating a, a sweet <laughs> at the top of the pelmet? No, but no, nobody <laughs> likes being watched, and that's what I'm saying. If you're sat on a train and you're knocking one out and that, and everyone's looking at you, it's. I don't. I don't think it'll catch on. <laughs> <laughs> well, it has caught on. Has it they're all doing it. They're just, they're just, they're just sitting there. They're doing, you know, they're reading the paper, doing Sudoku, <laughs> and 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 they're looking round when they're going. They're thinking, oh, no one knows I'm going. And everyone's thinking that, and everyone's going. I mean, it's partly because there are 120 million peasants from China's vast rural areas who swarm into the cities for work. And so, you know, th that sheer number of people means that the trains are so overcrowded. I just don't. Th I mean, what, what? What are we getting to? You know what I mean? What What's going on in the world that this is happening? I <laughs> know. I mean, people have always had to travel for ages. <laughs> I, d I, d I just don't. I don't understand why there isn't a toilet on it. We're going backwards. <laughs> We're going backwards, <laughs> aren't we? <laughs> why isn't there a toilet on it? <laughs> Well, maybe there is, but maybe people are thinking the queue is going to take forever. If you've got 125 million people, yeah, going but not back. everybody wants to go at once. I mean, I know Chinese and all that are like at the forefront of everything that goes on in the world, inventing stuff first. But this isn't one of the best <laughs> that they've come up with. What have they yeah. invented then? The Chinese just loads of stuff, haven't they? Yeah, well, loads of stuff. I was going to ask you. You seem quite educated on the subject, but um, they did them cat mop things that I told you about. Brilliant. Um, I mean, this was where you put mops on the feet of cats. Was that right? Yeah. And they Brilliant. wander about the house, clean up and that, wash the floor for you whilst they're pottering about. Um, <laughs> they've done like hats with umbrellas on them. They've done, they've done, I mean, they've, they've, they're known for like coming up with stuff first. Yeah, I mean, my first thought was gunpowder, but yeah, cats and mops is good as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just a final um, mention of uh, one of the emails that came through from Phil Hobby in Falmouth in USA. Uh, he says, Hello, chaps. Just wanted to let you know that I was at a party on Friday. And I bought two remixes of I Could Eat a Knob at Night on a CD. Let me tell you, I played them at the party. They were a huge success. They were a smash. By the end of the night, the party was hip to the words I Could Eat a Knob at Night. Uh, half of them were even singing along. So big thanks to uh, you, Ricky, Stephen, Carl. Now, what would be ideal, of course, I suppose, is one of the big superstar DJs, if they could drop that into their set. You know, a Carl Cox, a Fat Boy <laughs> Slim. Tong. <laughs> Pete Tong, the yeah. boy Tong. He got power, and I'd love to hear him drop it. Maybe yeah. even, uh, and I suppose Westwood wouldn't be able to put that in. I know he's he's more of a hip hop guy, but um, yeah. So I mean, if we get, if you, if you, at any point ever hear, I could eat a knob at night, uh, the remix at any kind of club event. Let us know. We'd love to hear about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Well, now to one of our most popular features. Um, I mean, this could even rival monkey news one day. It, I mean, it is monkey news. It's, it's <laughs> you know, it's news from the point of view of a monkey, a shaved monkey. It's Carl Pilkerton's diary. Oh, he's written it down. Yeah. <laughs> Was that the jingle, or were you just well, yeah, just sure. annoyed about sort of? <laughs> 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 okay. <sighs> Went and did the podcast. We had a meeting after. I don't like meetings as I can't keep focused on what people are talking about. I think Ricky has the same problem as after twenty-five minutes he was trying to wrestle me. <laughs> I tried to do what spiders do and stayed still as if I was dead. But Ricky <laughs> just stayed on top of me, not moving. A bit like when you see one of them big snakes swallowing a sheep. <laughs> Ricky got bored and released me. I went home thinking, why had I left my old job for this? A homeless man asked me for some money, but I didn't feel like I should treat him as I felt that he probably had a better day than me. <laughs> Suzanne called me to say she'd gone for a haircut and that she'd meet me in the supermarket. I went to the supermarket, but she wasn't there. I called her and she said she was near the fruit aisle. I went to the fruit aisle and she wasn't there. Turns out she was in a different supermarket <laughs> on the other side of town. And that if I'd listened to her properly, I'd have known that. I didn't want to say that I- Well, you just went to the first supermarket you thought of, as opposed to listening to what supermarket- I'm in the supermarket, alright, bye. I didn't want to say that I hadn't heard her properly, because my ears were ringing a bit from the wrestling from earlier. <laughs> Twenty-five minutes later, I met up with Suzanne. Her haircut wasn't that bad. Normally, her haircuts are followed by an argument between us, as she pays over the odds for some daft haircut that's the latest style. Brilliant. I wish she'd take a picture out of a magazine or ask for a style, rather than letting the hairdresser do what she wants. I said I only tell her to do this, as she's got a square head, and a close-cut <laughs> hairdo makes it look squarer. 
She said, what do you think of this cut? I said it looked all right, as I couldn't be bothered arguing about it. It's weird writing a diary. I don't know who thought of doing one of these first. The last time I did one was at school. They used to get you to do it so they could keep an eye on whatever you were up to. <laughs> My diary used to say the same thing every night. Got home, went to the shop to get potatoes, bread, milk. Went home, watched telly, went to bed. I think I might have gone to Twiggy's Dance Club just so I had <laughs> something different to write. You've not told us about Twiggy's Dance Club. It's just, uh, you know, I, I sort of, when I was a kid, I sort of gave ev everything a bit of a go. I did boxing and that, didn't I? D gave that a go. <laughs> um, For about 45 minutes. And, uh, yeah, a mate, a mate sort of said, oh, you know, you're into your dancing, your robotics and that. You're doing, <laughs> doing your body popping, right? Body popping and that. He said, uh, you ought to come to Twiggy's. And, um, I went there, um, but I didn't go in, it was shut. It was, <laughs> it was they, they were just having, like, loads of toilet rolls delivered. I think, like, <laughs> they they were, like, using it as a storage place for toilet rolls and that. So I said, oh, I've come to have a dance. And they're like, oh, not tonight. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> I, I never went back. <laughs> Brilliant. Oh, oh, what a waste. What a waste of an anecdote. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Brilliant! Just to recap, you're convinced then that the teachers are asking you to keep diaries so they can keep tabs on you, um, and then to continue the diary. As there were more problems happening on the estate, they started to add Saturday and Sundays to the school diary to keep an eye on what we were doing at the weekend. I struggled to fill it on a Sunday, as the shop I got potatoes and bread from was shot on a Sunday. <laughs> I had to go over to Shepherd's Bush to meet someone. I got the tube. There was a badly burnt man on the tube. It's amazing how the body can continue through quite a lot of bad stuff. It got me thinking about how much stuff you could remove in your body, one by one, <laughs> without dying. If it was a competition, the cockroach would win, as it can live for a week without a head. I just mean, like, say, say if, you know, they're running out of ideas for TV programmes and that, right? They get someone who isn't well, they go, look, do you mind if we make a programme on you? And what they do, they sit them in the bed, and they go, right, what we're gonna do now is take out the heart, but replace it with a pacemaker. Right, no, go on. No, 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 Sorry. People with pacemakers don't have their heart taken out and a pacemaker popped in. All right, then. Um, some sort of machine. What- what I'm getting to is- Have you been playing Operation? What I mean is- <laughs> What I mean is, the big finale would just be a head chatting with loads of wires going into it, and it's like, look what we can do with science. With <laughs> That's what the programme's called. It ends the same every week. The volunteer is just ahead with loads of wires coming out Look of it. Look what we can do with science. And he's going, Goodbye. Oh, I feel Ill. Got some post delivered to me today. It was- <laughs> Oh, this is This great. makes it in the diary. Got some post delivered to me today. It was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> <laughs> I got some post delivered to me today, it was addressed to Mr. Dilkington. <laughs> I opened it and the first sentence read, Dear Mr. K. Dilkington, you are one of our most valuable customers. I put it in the bin. Thought I would learn some new words, as Steve always says I don't use enough different words. I read in the Fortean Times that the word "wew" means an ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> Is what? that how I'm, am I pronouncing Who's that right? Who's using that word? Woo? Who is woo? using that it word? Was, it was just W-E-W-E. -W -E. Let's call it a woo. Uh -huh. An ugly female ghost with drooping breasts. <laughs> I think I'm right when I say there are too many words in the world. I don't think I will ever get round to using the word woo. Watched a health programme. Wasn't watching it properly, but heard some doctors say that we only get so many heartbeats in a lifetime, so don't do too much exercise. <laughs> I told Suzanne, and she said I probably hadn't heard it right. We got talking about death. Suzanne said she didn't like thinking about it. I said she might end up being a woo. <laughs> I was chuffed as I'd managed to use my new word. I went to the supermarket to get tonight's tea. On the way, I stopped and looked in the fishmongers at all the different fish they had in the window. It's like a child in, like in one of those kids' TV shows. I know! Mr. Kil Mr. Pilkington went to the fishmonger. He stopped and looked at all the fish in the window. Hello, Mr. Dilkington, they said. <laughs> there was a newspaper clipping stuck on the glass about a two-headed fish that they've made in Taiwan. I don't see the point in doing this as a fish having two heads ain't gonna solve the world's hunger problems, as the head is the bit you throw away. Invent a fish with two bodies, and I'd say well done. 
Good point, though, isn't it? Suzanne watched one of her favourite TV programmes. I've told her the telly only goes on if there's something she wants to watch. If there's nothing on, she has to talk to me about stuff I've learnt. Like Descartes. Watched a programme on him the other day. He is the one who said something like, I know I'm about because I dream. Doesn't work for everything because ants don't sleep. <laughs> I don't know if I'd like that or not. You don't know if you would like it if you didn't ever I'm sleep. Not sleeping. It's just one long day. I don't know. Don't know how you put up with that. Do you think it'd be a good idea? No. Why not? <laughs> because, as you said, it would get a bit boring. You know, your sleep is your rest, your time off. It get, it, it it helps you uh, detoxify. It helps you sort of um, think things through on a subconscious level. It, it, you know, but don't it, you ever get it where, I mean, sometimes it's brilliant to have a sleep when you're tired, but don't you sometimes yeah, feel that's like- that's the best time to have a sleep when yeah. you're tired. No, yeah. but sometimes when you go to bed and you're not that tired and you're kind of thinking, oh, I'm gonna waste some of the hours of my life now and I'm not really in the mood for this. Well, that's thing. just wishing you had longer on this earth doing creative things. I mean, if you didn't have to sleep, you could spend more time talking to a tortoise and going to the toffee shop. <laughs> All right, just doing a little advert for Friday Night Comedy on Channel 4. I mean, I, I don't know what you're doing. You might be going out and that, doing something nice, which, you know, if you are, then fair enough, go out. But I'm just saying, if you're staying in, you've got new green wing, right? That's nearly ready. Got my name is Earl, the It Crowd, all funny stuff and that. Don't know about you, but, you know, I'll be staying in watching it, just having a bag of crisps and stuff. So, if you're staying in, put the telly on, do that. If you're going out, go out, have a nice night. See you later. <laughs> Well, it's that time again. If you'd give us the jingle, please. Oh, Jim Pantry Dave. <laughs> okay, now that surely cannot be fair on anyone's ears listening. <laughs> right, um, ages ago, right, about about the 1950s. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There was this gangster knocking about. And do you know how, like... Were he called Hairy Fingers? Do you know how, like, a lot of gangsters... Like to get into gambling and that. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, like all these, all these peers and that, all these, all these mates who are like gangsters and stuff, mm. they've all bought horses, right? Like they tech, you know, tech racing and they make money from them and that, don't they? Yeah. Mm. So anyway, he and was Chuckles like- Chuckles Seagull was no different. And, and he was like, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good thing to get into, I might, might get into a bit of that, right? So he, he gets himself this horse, right? And it, there's a big race coming up, that's why he's sort of, it's he, a bit of a last minute. And the, and the jockey turns up and it's fine, he's a human jockey and it's fine. Excellent, okay, well that was so, another podcast. So anyway, so um, please listen oh, hang next. On, there's more, there's more. Oh, hang on. on. So, oh. so anyway, so, uh, this big race is coming up, he's, yeah. he's like, I've got to be involved in this yeah, because I can make a lot of money out of me also. Choose the jockey wisely then. So he says to his, like, mate, he said, look, uh, I've got myself a horse and that. He said, we just need a jockey, get someone, oh, yeah. sort it out, and yeah. what have you, so we can get in this race. So, yeah, the jockey so club. His, his mate's like, yeah, all right, I'll have, a, I'll have a word and that, have a look round and that, see if there's anyone decent. And there's, the, the good there. thing about jockeys is there's never been a shortage of jockeys, because a lot of them don't make the grade. So there's, there's, there's always too many jockeys to go round. Normally always too many human jockeys. Yeah, yeah, there's, you, there's never a problem getting jockeys. Fine. Go on. <laughs> so anyway, so... He comes was that true in the fifties as well? Absolutely. It's always been it's true. It's always been true. It's always, it's always just been true. There's no, there's no lack of jockeys. So... It's sort of close shot, people are trying to do it and they don't make the grade, so... But in the 50s, from your knowledge, there was never, there was not, like, in 1951, a shortage of jockeys for just one year? Absolutely never, I've known about <laughs> okay, that, I'm fine, quite yeah. keen. Right, Go on. so anyway, right, so, his mate says, look, I'm having a problem getting a jockey. Seems odd, oh, because no, Ricky's just weird. been saying... No, 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 he's just been saying there's not a problem. What do you mean, so... Just because the main problem was... Go on. A lot of jockeys were aware of this gangster and were saying, I'm not getting involved with this guy. The chances are, I won't get paid. You know, is a gangster. It's not no, worth it. No, you would do it if it was a gangster asking you. You'd be scared of the consequences. So anyway, he's saying, look, don't be coming to me with problems and that, right? I've got the horse. I want it in the race. Sort it out. So they're like, oh, but boss, and he's like, don't give me any of that. Exactly. Sort it out. They do what he says. So any jockey would do it. Go on. So anyway, so the day before the big race, yeah, <laughs> left it to the last minute. Okay, but yeah. fine. <laughs> and. uh he says, have you, have you got a jockey then? They're like, yeah, but, and he's going, D don't worry about it, have you got a jockey? Yeah, but, and he's like, well, look. He wants what, to what? say, sure, he wants, yeah. So, uh, he's saying, has he ridden their horses before on that? He said, well, yeah, he has, but mainly, and he's like, look, brilliant. And he goes, yeah, but mainly in like a in circus. In the, in the jung, 
No, like in, in the in the circus and that <gasps> it worked. It it worked with horses and stuff. In the circus, it's fine. Yeah. So it's like that's fine. that's enough. That's that's all I need to know. Well, they'd be too heavy because circus so people so are quite built, aren't they? They're, so, they're he said being so a bit heavier than the jockey because the jockeys are about eight and a half stone. He said, "Brilliant, get him down there." And that yeah. right. Yeah. Anyway, the race happens. He didn't want to meet him beforehand. He wasn't worried. No about point. That. Not no, bothered. No. As far as he's concerned, he's, it's put all his, sorted. he's putting his money on it and what have you. Yeah. So. Right. What happened is they were trying to make him put on the jo jockey outfit. Yeah. But for some reason it didn't fit that well. Sleeves too was, short, legs too, too long. It's that sort of problem. Okay. So they let him, like, you know, wear his stuff that he wore in the circus and that, because it's, it's, it's comfortable with that, yeah, he's yeah, happy yeah. with it, do you know yeah, what I mean? That's yeah, what he's exactly. happy with. Yeah. Anyway, race starts and what have you. Uh, this horse, straight out of the trap and that, high speed, right? This, this jockey's got a really big grin on his face, he's loving it, right? Everyone's cheering, going, who is this? Who's this jockey here? Yeah. It's amazing, never seen him before, and yet, look at him. But they can see his face, clearly. Anyway, Gangster's happy in that, cos he's, he's won. But I just want to say, the crowd, the crowd can see the jockey, can they? What? The crowd can, I mean, it's, it's Yeah, but he's so fast and what have <laughs> the you. The blur, it's a blur, it's all a blur, He's right? really, he's good at it. I mean, apparently right. he was close to falling off, and people were like, he's, he's gone, he's a goner. Right. He's got such a good reach. That he managed to grab hold oh, of the sure. oh, and right, well, they so. could tell he was smiling. They could tell he was smiling, but they couldn't see the, the detail of his face. Is that right? Just well, to clarify it's just, that. It's, it's just blur and that. Sure, just but they could tell teeth. he was smiling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, they knew he was happy. At the end of it, do you know, like the winner sort of rides around the crowd, but yeah, right? sort of you know show off and what have you. Yeah, and all the women are there. And do you know, like women are all dolled up at these events. Sure, yeah. they've all got big big hats on. Uh, Sometimes they got through on those hats. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> and one, one of the women, in one the of 50s, the women, oh Carmen Miranda was very yeah, popular. Yeah, yeah. One of the women had like, like you say, fruit and what have you on it, yeah. a little, little banana. Right, right. some kind um, of they're Cuban. They're not woman. real. They're not real though. The hats, though. They're, 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 <laughs> they're, they're not real fruit, is it? Of course not. Never. So but I don't really know who. I thought they wore those sort of kind of Cuban yeah, entertainment even, shows. I didn't realise they wore them yeah, at events. Yeah, even if it's like a big event, you know, you might have a hat with fruit, and it, it's sort of joke, but, it, but it's it's fake fruit because it would it would it would perish. Well, this this jockey didn't understand that. He'd never seen false fruit. I don't understand. But what? why did the, why did the jockey suddenly? Why was he so desperate for fruit? I don't, I don't understand. So anyway, so meanwhile the gangster's collecting his five hundred quid winnings. Yeah. Right? He's over the moon. Yeah. He kicks off because of this woman with the fruit. Yeah. I don't understand. I still don't understand no, where the jockey would go. Everyone from. noticed. Jockey, little monkey fella. Oh, that makes sense. If he was a monkey, that would make sense. Yeah. What year was this? Cause I wanna it was it, it was nineteen fifties, and that's where the saying comes from about do you know like in Cockney slang, five hundred quid is a monkey. He, he sort of put, uh, he, you know, he put a monkey on it, and it all goes back to the time so when- So this happened in this, in, in, in England? In this country, yeah, yeah in the So someone could well still be alive so, that we could easily yeah. contact that Well, that's it, we always, you know, there's no time length on this monkey news, if you've got any, if it's history, you know, if yeah. it goes back- Or if it's made up, bullshit. Just, just send it in. If it's so, bollocks, uh, if you've got any bollocks, if it's absolutely bollocks, send please send it in. That's this week's monkey news. RickyGervais.com <laughs> Well, that's the end of uh, the tenth podcast in a series of twelve. Only two more to go. Um, one more hour of the uh, the drivel that is um, the thoughts of Chairman Pilkington or Dilkington, as he should now be known. Um, this uh, podcast was brought to you by Positive Internet. Those great guys at Positive Internet host the world's number one podcast. It's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. If you want to get in touch, remember it's podcast at rickygervais.com. And Carl Pilkington. Right. Hello. Welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with Guardian Unlimited. Back where it all started. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And of course, Carl Pilkington. Right. The internet phenomenon that is Carl Pilkington. Ah. Now, ah, this could be that, interesting. Now, that noise, do you, you want to explain, Steve? I will. I've just sent a text to this number that some of you may have heard of, 63336. Now, apparently, this is a number you can uh, send a text to, and it will answer any question that you have for it. And in the past, for instance, I sent it um, quite some quite profound questions. I once asked it, um, should they have dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki, and it had a very thoughtful answer. So, we've sent it a question, perhaps equally thoughtful. Carl Pilkington believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? Now, we sent that because this is the Halloween special. These podcasts are, are three one-off free specials, and they're free because we want to thank people who, uh, who paid, um, for the, for the audio books we did, the, uh, the last two series, so thank you for that. I've just bought a, a flat in New York, and Steve's just bought a lovely BMW. Mercedes. Oh, is it a Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. 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 I haven't seen yeah. it yet. Yeah. Carl's have his kitchen done and his boiler replaced. 
Still not happy. But, um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, the back catalogue is still available um, in audiobooks on iTunes, but these are three free ones. Anyway, the question we asked, 6336, Carl Pilkinson believes in ghosts, is he an idiot? And this is the response. Unusually, producer Carl Pilkington is both an idiot and a comic genius. His humour is not to everyone's taste, however. That's <laughs> amazing. That's the response. But it's curious because it doesn't really answer our question about ghosts. Send them, do you believe in ghosts? Okay. This is the Halloween special, of course. That's why we're talking about ghosts. Carl, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen, like, a proper, a proper ghost. So why do you believe in something that uh, there's no evidence for? Yeah, you but know? what, what, why are we here then? If, if it is just sort of, you're born, right? And when, I mean, we are useless, at least other creatures, when they're born. Well, you speak for yourself. No, but they're born, other creatures are born to do a job, aren't they? When a bee's born, you know what that's going to be doing. It hasn't got any <laughs> options. That's got a job to do. And it does that job and it dies and the next one comes along. Oh. We asked it, do you believe in ghosts? The existence of ghosts is not proven. Many experiments have claimed to identify ghosts, but none have been scientifically sound. Excellent. See, yeah, that, that, that's that, just, that, that's but, that, but that, that's a sensible, intelligent, logical, thoughtful answer. Weird things have happened to me when, uh, mm. I was living at home. And, uh, I was in bed one Where night. Where do you live now? No, but I was at my first home. Your mm. parents? Yeah, my mum and dad's. Mm. So I'm in bed, and, uh, I'm lying there, and you know you get that sense of like, uh, oh, there's something going on. Mm. And, uh, I sort of look over my quilt, and there's nothing there. Thinking it's weird, that. So, uh, turn me back on it. I'm thinking I don't want to know. If there is something there, <laughs> I don't want to know. Right? <laughs> so I'm turning me back on it, but then there's like a really high-pitched noise, right? Sort of the hairs on my back are, like, going up a bit. And I'm like, oh, I don't like this. And it's the, the high-pitched noise. Yeah, the hairy back even as a kid. No, but, you know, Not everyone's got little I hairs on them, aren't they? Everyone's got little tiny hairs on them and mm. stuff. And, uh, and I thought, oh, I can't stand this. And, and I turned around, put the light on, legged it downstairs, mm. right? And my mum's saying, what are you doing? I'm going, oh, I don't know, there's something up there. So she said, all right, then watch the telly. So I stayed up for a bit, mm. uh, watching the telly. Went back to bed, the high pitched noise had gone. Went to sleep. Get up the next day. Charlie from next door comes round. He goes, Hilda's dead. Mm -hmm. Right? And, uh, my dad said, Oh, when did that happen? He said, Last night at quarter to eleven. Right. That's, that's when I was in bed. So? What, what are you telling me for? Because it's weird, isn't it? It's that thing of. Uh, Would it, what do you think it would be weirder that, uh, no one ever died at quarter to eleven? When you were in bed. No, but that's when all the weirdness was going on. That's when the tone was happening, my back was getting itchy and stuff. And Coincidence. And I went down and watched telly, went back up, gone and that, but that's when her spirit had sort of... No, no, no. Ah, okay, right, interesting. No, this is, this is where we get into the facts. So Hilda's spirit had left was whizzing round, whizzing round my yeah. bedroom, because my bedroom was right next door to theirs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So I'm just saying, that's, that's one. Why, that's did they, why do they whiz round? When what? they when they die, why do spirits whiz round when they die? Because they're going. Where am I going? Are they? And they're whizzing round, aren't they? Am I going down? Am I going up? No, no, that's mm. Carl. Oh, no, no but I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's n it's not going to be easy, is it? How do you think it works? It doesn't work. But once again, it's not proof of anything, Carl. Mm. Beyond the fact that you were a child in bed. Why did your dad ask what time she died? No, he it, it just sort of you know what do you say to someone when it's it's awkward, isn't it? When someone gives you bad news, so you just think, well, what can I ask? Oh, what time did she die? What time did that happen? Sorry? No, just, what, you my, just go, Exactly what, what time did she die? Uh, my no, wife, ex my wife passed away. Yeah, what, what time is that? <laughs> yeah. No, not exactly. He just said, no. oh, phew, that's bad. When did that happen? Right. Like, mm. right. And he said, well, thanks for asking. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. I remember what did he say? What did he say last night? Oh, it's just weird, isn't it? Convenient, aren't they, all these it stories? Is, or is it, or, yeah, I mean, it's either that's exactly what happened, Rick, or he's, he's misremembering the, the yeah. actual I don't, I don't, I don't know which one <laughs> to plump for. But, I'll tell you this, though. Go on. You know, if we're talking about ghosts and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Ilda. Yeah. Uh, choose your bog standard old woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> right. I think that's on the gravestone. I know, yeah. <laughs> no, did you, it's just- Did you do the eulogy? No, you know. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> <laughs> you, you what can we say about Hilda? <laughs> Bog standard old woman. Right, there's sandwiches at the bar. <laughs> <laughs> That's the most insane 
insulting thing you could ever say. <laughs> well, it's, uh, there's, there's nothing. No. <laughs> Let's just think about Hilda French... lived her life. <laughs> Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Hilda. Who died at quarter to eleven, specifically. And was a bog-standard old woman. <laughs> Are we burning or burying? But anyway, but she lived to be quite old. Mm. Which annoyed you. And, but, yeah, no, in a bog-standard way. But this is what I was saying about us all living too long and mm. stuff. It just, it just makes it worse when it does come to us being a ghost. I don't know what you're talking about that, again. That sentence made no sense. Just, if you are gonna be haunted, right, say, I know you're gonna say, well, I don't believe in them, so I'm not worried, so don't be going on about it. Mm. But say, like, you know, your new place that you've bought, you move in, and you go to bed, and there's something moving about the room. Mm. You see it, mm. it's a ghost. Oh, no. Okay, no, let, let's, for the sake More of argument, likely, a Siamese cat called Ollie. No, because that's probably got its own room, on it? <laughs> <laughs> but what I'm saying is, would you prefer to have an old person moving about looking at you, or just a young person. I'd prefer a youngish person who looks normal and is sort of floating about and you go, right. that, th that looks normal, floating about. No, but, but an old woman would really scare me. Some ghosts are always gonna have a bad reputation because they look scary because they're old. So that's- You talk absolute shit. That's all I'm saying, so- Can we're you now believe going we ever charged for this? No, but look- <laughs> If, if we are going into another life, right, after this- Which we're not, We move yeah. on to another life. Yeah. We're not gonna move on. That land, say if it is like another world, where we go and we plough fields and we grow crop- crop- Croppage. We grow crop. Crops. Uh, crops, if you want. Yeah, um, well I would like to use the English language. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's too much fruit about, so just a crop. Just something we need too to get back. Too much fruit about. <laughs> He's got an answer for everything. That's so we I'm grow saying. some crop. Yeah. yeah. So you grow your crop, and, uh, now, if we're all going into that other land or world or universe, mm. old, who's gonna do the cropping? <laughs> 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 oh, God! Oh! You- I, I've never heard so much crop in my life. <laughs> it's a load of old crop. I, I had to go for, a uh, an ultrasound, right? Isn't that what you do if you're pregnant? Yeah, but they, they, do you know I've had kidney stones? Are you expecting? We've talked about it in the, in the other podcast and that, that we've done, right? Uh, I've had a kidney stone. I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but it hurt. It was painful and that. Yeah, well, you are going on about it. Yeah, yeah and there was no, nothing. No, but I'm just saying. It's routine. Don't worry about it. It's not routine. Well, uh, well, why do they have to keep going back? Then? Why do they have to keep going back? You're, you're yeah. questioning me. You're getting into a routine. Yourself. Keep going back. It's better than working it. You don't have to you know, the sell book. the book. No, no. Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? I don't know. I just say that we've got a book out, right? The World of Carl Pilkington. It's, it's, it's out now. When he goes on holiday, the first week, right? Uh, he, he's in and out of hospital. He's doing no good. He's got to go in again. He goes away with his family like twice a year. Goes away with Suzanne's family family twice a year. Yeah. He's now said he doesn't want to do any press for it because it's boring or he doesn't want- why don't you- why don't you plug in the book? Well, I mean, if you- if you're an author, you've got to put- I've, get behind I've it. bought books without hearing someone telling me to buy stuff. No, you're- you la buy you're stuff. lazy. You're no, lazy. I'm, I'm not lazy. It's just that I'm sick and tired of putting telly on or the radio and having people telling me, oh, you've got to buy this, you've got to buy that. No, I don't have to do anything. I'll have a look myself when I'm in a bookshop. Let them just find it. But there are hundreds and thousands of books, Carl. They may not find it. Well, you're trying to look. direct them towards it. I'm, I don't want to direct them to it. I just, you know, if you come across it, but most why of have you books... put all this work into this book? All these illustrations you've done in because extra I material. enjoyed it for me. Right, but you don't want anyone to read it. Yeah, so why just put it in it. a drawer? They will, they will read it. They'll they'll find it. People will find it. It's in the shop, isn't it? I'm always finding little books on different things and what have you. Yeah, you don't read them. You read the first couple of lines and you get it wrong. What, you know, it, it. So I went back, right, and I had the uh, the ultrasound thing. Where they they look in to see what else is in there, mm. uh, and uh, when I was in the waiting room, there was a woman there. I reckon she was about ninety eight. <laughs> 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 now <laughs> why why are they rooting around in her to see what's up with her? Just let her let her die. Do you know what I mean? If she's not in any Jesus. pain, no, no. All Such I'm saying, I'm just saying, how long does she want to be around? And the, the the problem is, she went off. Right, I was sat in the waiting room. She went off into the little cubicle to put her, uh, a gown on. And because she's old, she can't bend her arms and that. So she came out with it all open. <laughs> on the back. <laughs> and it was horrible. It looked like, like a, a chicken that hasn't been looked after, right? It was all leathery skin and that, right? Now the thing <laughs> is, 
it's all very well keeping people alive, but the surroundings of the body isn't meant to be lasting that long, is it? Mm. Do you know what I mean? The actual skin of, of a body, it's all very well keeping the heart going, checking the kidneys and all that, but we're not meant to be around this length of time. Yet we are, we're messing with it. Yeah. Just do the gown up. You never do, you never get, you, you never see insects or anything like that that look old. You don't go, look at the state of that. Because <laughs> they live about four weeks! Yeah, but maybe that's the way it's meant to be, in the same way we, maybe we were only meant to live to be 40. But why did you go in for your operation then? Why didn't you just think, well, this is it, I've had my time. If they're looking after an old woman who's about 98, I'm having a go. <laughs> well, of you course. Because you want to live on. She, she might have been figure. flirting with you. No, she was- Keeping it open, just so you can have a little look. But I'm just saying, is that right? Is it right that but you were going in there rooting around and stuff? I didn't like it, I didn't like having it done, you know, I don't like going to the hospital and stuff and the doctors and all that and she was pushing the, uh, the thing down and she said, oh, you can have a look if you want. So what, what down where? On, on me kidneys, she was pushing like this little scanner thing. Oh, right. She was going to have a look, I was going, I don't want to have a look. She's going, what's up with you? I said, I don't want to see me inside. Did they, have a did they put a tube down the Indian knob? Yeah, they did all that. We've talked about that in the, in the other- But you were unconscious, weren't you? Uh, yeah, but it doesn't matter, does it? If you know it's going on, it still bothers you. It's because you're asleep. Well, not really, no. What do you mean? Well, why does it bother you if you're asleep? Well, that's like saying, oh, I woke up and the house was robbed. Oh, it doesn't matter, you're asleep. Well, no, it's but- It's still going to bother you, isn't it? <laughs> no, but, no, but you knew it was happening and you, you did it willingly. What? It's not pleasant to go in and be made to go unconscious. That's the unpleasant bit, isn't it? And the uh, pain and- Well, no, it's more it, the idea of it, isn't it? That's why, you know, doctors telling you everything they're doing. It's like, don't tell me. You know what you're doing. Just do it. I'm well, not yeah, gonna have so a go at it. You know, it's not like DIY people coming around and going, oh, well, what you should have done there is, and you can go, oh, I'll have a go at that next time on my own without calling you out. Forget kidney stones again. I'm not gonna go, oh, I've had it done before. I know what to do. I'll stick it up there. Doesn't happen, does it? But I can't, what was I saying? So anyway, <laughs> so she, she was pushing the, the scanner over yeah. me kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Now, it was weird with her because at no point did she make eye contact with me. Well, I don't understand what that means. Well, she didn't meant to wink and go, your kidneys are fucked. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, ju it's just weird that she probably spends her days looking inside people more than she does talking to people. I just thought it was odd that she, that's, that's how she sees people. When she looks at people, she probably sees kidneys. What, the, this doctor? The woman doctor. Well, doctor? Uh, yeah. Right. So, what you're saying is, the strange thing is that she often spends more time looking in people, because she's a doctor, than chatting to them. Yeah. And I is it weird that Jonathan Ross is the other way around? Because he's a chat show host. He spends more time talking to people than looking inside them. No, but even when I was he's asking got a, a different job. <laughs> when I was asking her questions, saying, uh, you know, does it look all right? Uh, what's it doing? Is it moving about? You know, asking her questions about my kidney. She could have quite easily just turned around and, and give me a bit of eye contact. But she, she was, was, looking, she was looking, I'm but concentrating, but she I'm was at work. looking at the screen in order to answer your questions. Yeah, she's at work, she's doing something. No, but just- If she was here now going, Carl, what are you doing with that microphone? You'd go, shut the fuck up, I'm doing a podcast. Did she run this scanner over your head? <laughs> <laughs> and if so, did she find anything? <laughs> like to try and educate Carl, Rick, as, you know, as we have done since we've known him really, and mm. he doesn't really seem to absorb any information. No. And, um, and I, I was asked recently, when I was going back to Bristol, if I would come and talk to a classroom of school children. Oh, right. You know, just talking about careers, and particularly my career. And, uh, I went down there, it was in Bristol, it was an inner city school, quite rough area. You're a son of Bristol, you're uh, Exactly, they love me You're a there, celebrated right? son of Bristol, you've done- you're a Golden Globe winning, uh, person who's returned to the homeland. It annoys me when I go down there that I'm not met as I get off the train like the Beatles used to be when they came back from America. By you know? a mayor and a brass band. Hordes of people, ticker tape. Forever this day will be called <laughs> Steve Merchant Day. <laughs> exactly. It frustrates me that I just sneak back into town and there's no yeah. fanfare. <laughs> yeah. But, um, basically they asked me to, to come talk at this school and I sort of batted them away and said I'm too busy. And so, um, they, I foolishly left them uh, the opportunity to, to ask me again, which they did, and I didn't have a decent excuse, so I went. And I was expecting to talk to maybe a room of six formers. Um, they were nine, <laughs> these kids, nine, nine and ten years old. But I realised as I was walking into the school, I was suddenly really nervous. I was more nervous than anything I've ever done. Because I realised that I've not spoken to a child 
like that since I was a child myself. I just, I've never interacted with them. So I didn't know at what level I would be able to pitch this, this talk. You know, I didn't know what they understood, what ideas they understood. Obviously, in my mind, I was picturing Carl, and yeah. then I was ratcheting it up a few years, sort of IQ-wise. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I went So there, what did you talk to them about? And I was supposed to talk about careers, and I realised very quickly that they didn't really understand conceptual Did ideas. they know who you were? Not really. One or two of them may vaguely knew. One of them went, what's Richard Ray's like? And I said, um... you got a deep voice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Actually, that was one of the teachers. <laughs> and, um, and, uh, I'm supposed to be talking about careers, how to get into careers. And I start trying to explain the idea of being a writer, and I say that it's very important to be able to get inside other people's minds, you know, figure out how they think, and how, you know, and try to understand other people. But this, they didn't really seem to grasp. They started talking amongst each other. You know, they were just losing interest. <laughs> I lost them straight away. I was devastated. <laughs> oh, no. So then, and this is the worst thing, right? I started lying to them. Because <laughs> I realised that every time I told a slight lie, because I thought they'd be interested, That's they were. Great. So I, I know on, like, Justin Timberlake. You're not joking, right? They said, one of them said, I understand you used to be a DJ. And I went, yeah, it's great being a DJ because you get to meet pop stars like Robbie Williams and Beyonce. Never met either of them. <laughs> Never met them. And I, they went, and one of the kids went, what's Beyonce like? <laughs> and I went, and I went, joking, I went, you wouldn't like her. And I went, <laughs> I said, no, I'm joking, I'm joking. She's, lo she's lovely, she's sweet, she's good as gold. I was making it up. And, oh, but God. they were loving it, and the teacher was going, would you all like to meet Beyonce? And they were going, yeah. And I was thinking, God, well. We'll bring her, I'll bring her down tomorrow. <laughs> well, exactly, but I don't know why I felt the, it was like I wanted to win the approval of these nine-year-olds. That's amazing! Because my own achievements, I realised, wouldn't mean anything to them. You know, I could yeah. talk about the people I have met, but they don't care if I've met Robert De Niro, but they're interested if I've met Girls Aloud. <laughs> Oh, me and girls led some of the times we've had together, <laughs> it turns out. <laughs> but, uh, it is fascinating when you have to interact with, with people, with children like that, because I've got no concept of how to talk to children. I don't, to me, I can't grasp the difference, really, in conversation and chat between, say, a seven-year-old and a thirteen-year-old. I don't know at what point they learn stuff and pick stuff up. Do they understand, do you know what I mean? It's, I find it really hard. I remember hard. once when I was about nine, uh, the... The, the headmaster, Debbie Headmaster, used to do a little fable. I've talked about him in stand-up, he used to do a little fable. There's, uh, uh, one I remember where, um, he, uh, got a tube of toothpaste and he got someone up, he said, uh, you, um, come out here, squeeze this tube of toothpaste out on this board. And he squeezed it all out, right? He squeezed it all out and emptied it. He went, now put it back in. And the kid tried to struggle and he goes, you can't do it. He said, it's easier to do something than undo it. <laughs> okay, go back to class. <laughs> like, people are going, oh, I get it. I know what he means. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're just thinking, don't squeeze all the toothpaste out. Yeah. Just save some. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, there's there's no way they're going to take on <laughs> no, that exactly. metaphor at the it's age of nine. It's too conceptual, yeah. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just stop misbehaving or I'll <laughs> smack you. That worked. Carl, have you had to have any dealings with kids? How do you get on with kids? Do you relate to them? Or are they just as angry and perplexed by your views as we are? Uh, I mean, it's with everything, isn't it? Everyone's different and that. I can get on with some young kids, all right, and some of them are, like, you know, a bit cocky and what have you. But, um, I'm sort of getting on with a baby at, at the moment, because, uh, I've been made a, like, a, a godfather. Think of that. So, uh... Wow, who did they reject? I know. No, Who's, I mean, it, it, Who said no? Yeah. Well, well I did, no? I did at first, and Brilliant. then Suzanne said, look, you're not, you know, it's not really a choice, you, it's not like a job interview or something that you're thinking about, is it a good thing? So you, you've, you've been asked, you should take it on. But what, are, are they, what if they, hold on, if you're the godfather of this yeah. kid, presumably you're friends with them and they probably listen yeah, to this yeah, podcast. Yeah, friends. So now they're hearing, for the first time, that you didn't want to be Godfather. Yeah, but I think I think that's good, because they can hear that, you know, it wasn't, I didn't just do it because I was asked, I thought about it, I thought it through. Um, you know, I, I was worried. It was kind of like, is this a job? And, uh, I was, I was just Well, it's nothing it. but tokenistic, is it? You're not Well, really this is what I looked into. I said, we went back and I said, right, I've been thinking about this thing. Uh, I've heard that it's my job. If anything happens to them, I've got to kick in. And I'd have to start looking after the baby. So I said, right, how many of you are in your family? If that happens, am I going to start getting a phone call or what? And he said, no, there's a big family. You're not, you know, you're at the bottom of the list. So I was like, how many? And just finding out what their age is. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, I've only got a small flat. It would have to sleep in the sink or something, right? So I uh, checked all that out and, uh, all safe. So this, uh, this baby is spooking me out a bit because it doesn't blink. 
and that's pretty weird when you're sort of talking to it and you're thinking, it's not blinking. Are you sure it's not asleep? No, it's honestly, it's weird. If something doesn't blink, it's like it's, it's evil. Cause blinking just makes something look a bit more friendly, doesn't it? <laughs> and I was stood there, you know, talking to it, I just tell it little stories about anything. Uh, it's lying there looking up at me. How old is it? It's about, must be about two and a half months. Well then, why are you telling it stories? Cause it likes it. But it's just weird how, like, then I'll, I'll sort of forget the story because I'm looking at it going, it's not blinked yet. It's been about <laughs> ten minutes, it's not blinking. <laughs> so then I forget the end of the story and I just walk away because it's not bothered anyway, it's probably not listening, is it? But <laughs> <laughs> what a pointless tale! What a pointless tale now and at the time. I think it likes it. The kids like stories, like you say, they're not bothered if it's, if it's not true or anything. Or if you walk away before the ending because you've forgotten it. That's Brilliant. why it's not blinking. It's so dumbstruck at the idiocy coming out of your gob. No, but you don't need to hear endings of stories. Maybe, like I said that's to you- That's the point. That's the point of a story, isn't no, it? No, it's not. That's the point where people- that's why people like stories because they're hooked into knowing what happened. No, because there's loads of films that happen and they have a funny ending. You leave there going, I wonder what's meant to happen, and then you make it up in your own head. You go, well, I bet what happened is that person went off and got married to that woman, mm. and they lived that. And then in your head, it's the truth. It's actually what happened. But but I think that's better. Why are we told everything? Because so what would your end be to a story such as the Elephant Man? Okay, he's rescued from the freak show. He's put in the hospital. He becomes something of a celebrity. Then what happens? He discovered he had big ears and he could fly, and he 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 joined the circus and he was the the main attraction. Um, I wouldn't change change the end that much because at the end of the day, you can't you can't make something up that's not believable. At the end of the day, he's got an head like an elephant. He's not going to have a good life, is he? Mm. So there's no point making out that he went on loads of women fancied him, and you know he he modelled hats. It's not going to happen. <laughs> so so he's got to die. The elephant man had to die, yeah. but. At the same time, was shot by poachers. Just show, just for his, show, a, for his a, a, show a few positives, you know, because I'm sure there was good bits in his life. I don't know what they were, but you know, look, look at everything. Uh, what was he like when he was a little baby elephant? They didn't cover what he was like as a kid, but you can get away with them sort of looks when you're a baby. You can be an ugly baby, and everyone goes, "Oh, isn't it nice?" There was some woman in a cafe the other week mm -hmm. that I was sat in. And she came up and she sat down with her mate and she was talking loudly, going on about, oh, the baby's lovely. They said it's got, uh, got lovely big eyes, uh, really big hands and feet. Now that doesn't sound like a nice baby to me. <laughs> I felt like saying it sounds like a frog. But I thought, I don't know her. There's only, there's only so much you can say to, to a stranger. I don't know what kept, kept me from saying it. That's what I was saying before about there's something, there's something. It sounds like a frog. There's something inside of you that stops you. Yeah, that's amazing that you had the urge to go. That doesn't sound like a good baby. What, love? I'm just listening <laughs> into conversation. That baby you're talking about sounds like a fucking frog. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But something stopped him saying it. <laughs> I just came back from uh, America and. Uh, they love Halloween. They're obsessed there. over there. I mean, it's a it's a proper proper thing out there. Here, it's sort of half hearted. A few people, a few middle class families, sort of. Uh, but do you, you think know, it'll get up. more popular here though if we do find out that ghosts are about? Well, that that never happened because they're not. No, okay? but if they did, then but, suddenly that would be a big. Well, Ameri a big thing. America makes things famous now um, because of because of film culture and everything. So. Yeah, it's it's all it's all it's all from that. I I, I doubt we uh, celebrated much at all, did we? Fifty years ago, so I think it's crept. Oh, up. certainly over here we didn't. But it's no. been largely introduced over here through commercial ideas, isn't it? Let's yeah, pr we can yeah. sell stuff for and, and and film and 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 things like that. And uh, but um, out there, it's it, it was they they start like weeks and weeks before, and they're decorated like proper proper. And um, but I saw a baker's a little bakery in um in in Soho. Um, and, uh, it didn't look right with cobwebs all over it and spiders on the buns. Yeah. And, but even though it's fake, it just, it's just, I don't think you should do it on a bakery. It, do you know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, I know what you mean. It's, it's a bit creepy. That, that's, that surely puts you off yeah. the, the product a little bit. I, I always know. find it a bit depressing, like last I remember going into supermarkets and you see sort of these old women who, who, you know, in their sixties and they're doing 
this job they don't really want to be doing, but they've been made to dress up. As a hat, I know. As a witch or as, as Cinderella, and it just- Well, they could do it, it in like a morgue or something, just to sort of- Brighten up the place. Well, just so people aren't that scared. Imagine that. Imagine you're going to identify your, 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 your dead relative, and they go, what's the spiders all over? It's, uh, 31st of October. No, oh, but, okay. but just make it a bit spookier and have a bit of fun with it, and let's not get serious about, you know, like I say, passing on. Yeah, but, but those sort of people have to take their job seriously. I remember when, um, my mum died, and, um, uh, I had to go along and I was talking about, um, uh, the, what, wreath they wanted, and this, this person, uh, quite rightly, had to turn off their sense of humour in a way, because I suppose they're so, they mustn't offend anyone, so I had to... He spoke like that at all times. <laughs> yeah. At all times. Okay, and what, what, um, would you like the wreath to say? Um, she was a mother and a, a, a grandmother. I went, yeah, my um, uh, mother, grandmother, and, and, uh, what was her name? I said, uh, her name was, um, Eva. I said, um, and I made a joke. I said, do we get a discount? Because her name's short. And she went, well, actually, um, didn't laugh, didn't, didn't get yeah. that at all. She just went, yeah. just answered the question. She went, well, actually, you pay by the letter. I thought, okay, that fell flat. I'll go again. I went, well, uh, a friend used to call her E. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She went, I went, I'm joking. She went, okay. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. Bad audience. <laughs> bad yeah. time, bad audience. Tough crowd. Yeah, undertakers, so, never known for their- Yeah, um, exactly, yeah. Their they don't crack jokes, Carl. A, f a, f a friend of mine, um, was, um, tr trained to be a doctor, and, um, in his first year, uh, when they actually, they practice, they intern at the, the hospital, um, he was watching this patient and, uh, two o other doctors came in and I won't say his name, um, they said, uh, can you, um, can you go and check on Mr. So-and-so? He went, yeah, and change his drip. So he went in, changed his drip, came back out. The doctors came, after about ten minutes, they came running and said, what did you do? What did you do? And, uh, they went in there and said, I just changed his drip. He goes, well, he's dead. He's dead. He was going, well, uh, I just changed the trip. I did this and that. And they started laughing. He goes, no, he was dead when we sent you in there. Yeah. Now, that is almost excusable because it's imperative if you're a doctor Absolutely. to become accustomed to yeah. Yeah. the fact that people die and that it's, Exactly. You know, yeah, so, that, so they were making a joke about a, a dead body that means nothing to them other than professionally. Yeah. You know, they were getting through it. He thought he'd just murdered someone. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, he thought he just killed someone. Um, but yeah, they have to be desensitised. But they wouldn't do that in front of the relatives. They wouldn't go, I had a laugh earlier with a <laughs> young intern, um, when your dad died, we sent him in to change the drip. Didn't even check. <laughs> it was quite good. Anyway, let's get him out of here. No, but they do, but they do have a laugh. I heard about a doctor who was, uh, working on a brain, right? Mm. Um, and apparently when they work on the brain, it's best if they keep you awake. Because, um, you know, just so you can go, that hurts a bit, and they go, oh, let's not touch that bit again. <laughs> That's right? the reason, Rick. Amazing. That's the reason. No, there is it's certain, amazing. There's certain yeah. operations, isn't there, where they go, you know, we can knock you out for that, but for this one we want to know- It's probably because the awake. brain needs activity. to be active in order to- Yeah, yeah they show activity, thing, But yeah, sure, yeah, no, so it's anyway. actually so you can wake up and go, yeah, no, that hurt that, that stings. <laughs> oh, that stings. Don't pop that in there. You can't feel anything in the brain anyway. No nerve endings. Really? You well, can't- can't feel it, can you? Well, maybe there's another reason, but anyway, his head's open. He's sat on this chair. Um, the doctor's going- I reckon he was laying down. I thought he was laying down, but in your world he's not, he's sat on a hard-backed I think it's more like chair. in front of a mirror, like a hairdresser type thing, right? <laughs> and he's cut the skin off. Uh, go, 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 yeah, get a bit shorter there. So he's-, he's So for the weekend, sir? He's oh, I won't be shagging with no brain. <laughs> anyway, so he's, he's cut the skin off and, uh, you know, chopped a bit, and you're, al you're always gonna get bits, aren't you? Sort yeah. of. Whenever you cut anything, you end up with a bit missing. <laughs> but anyway, somehow it's it, it, it does the brain stuff. He fixes it. I don't know what he was doing, but if, don't you? If you, if don't it, you don't know about. You don't know about the intricacies of brain surgery. That I find perplexing. So you're not a neurosurgeon. I don't, well, I don't want. Oh, okay, so they sorted out the problem, right? Mm. And he goes, right. All we've got to do now is uh, stick the uh, the head bit back on. Yeah. Um, That's what it's called, by the way. The oh, head this bit. This happened. This happened. Yeah. The head bit's connected to the <laughs> face bit. Yeah. So he sticks. Nurse, it. head bit. <laughs> Doctor, do you need leg bit? Not yet, nurse. Head bit, then leg bit. So they stuck the, the head bit back on, and then, uh, Can you pass me the sharpie sharpie thing? He was trying to sew it, and he was going, this isn't fitting this. 
He's going, I don't know. And, and, and do you know, like, because the person- Right, if this turns out that <laughs> it's <laughs> someone else's head- Or no, 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 a, no. a toupee from the doctor next to him, <laughs> yeah. or a cat- Meow! No, You've shown a cat to my brain! <laughs> it's none of that. He's trying to sew it and he's thinking, why ain't it fitting? And he's thinking, is it because the head's swollen? Because, you know, he's been messing about in it and things yeah. swell, don't they, and messed about yeah. with. So he's messing with it. He's going, I don't, I don't understand this. And he's panicking a bit because the patient's awake and chatting and stuff. And, mm. you know, well, it's difficult to have a normal chat when you're panicking a little bit. I know, bit. there's a queue as well. People want their brain done. And they're, they're, they're reading old copies of magazines. They're going, hurry up. So. I'm going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to wash it? No, no, no. Just, uh, I'll wash it later. Just, just, just <laughs> take it off, do the brain, put it back on. Anyway, what happens is he mm. has to start rubbaging. <laughs> it's a start rummaging. Sort of rummaging. 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 No! There's no N before the first G. Rummaging. Well, he starts looking through the, uh, he starts having a look through the bin. Because, oh, what? Because he, he knows he's chucked a bit away of the skin. Right. Oh, where okay. is this surgery <laughs> where a bloke's sitting up in front of a mirror and there's a bin? Is there a little basketball ring above the bin as well, so when he throws things it goes through there first? I'm just saying that's what happened and you were saying about things that happen you, and you've got a joke about so it. So he's rummaging and what, what happens? He said to him, he said the, the fellow was starting to sense the nervousness and he said, what's going on here? And he says, oh, I'm never gonna believe it, I've, I've lost a bit of your skin. Lost a bit and, of uh, your head, yeah. I can't Why is so he cut, I don't understand, why is there- why That's is it in what two I mean. bits? Because because things just break up, don't they? It's like chicken. When you see him walking around, everything's in place and it sticks together. <laughs> you cook it, suddenly it all breaks up. He, he cooked his face before <laughs> he cut it out. I'm just saying how how flesh it sticks together well. Yeah, when he'd, he'd, he'd cooked the scalp before he'd taken it off his no, head. No, but it's he? just an example of how oh, skin okay. can break up with the muscles and everything. So he's rum he's rummaging in the bin and does he find the head? He found the bit and then he's like, oh, sorry about that, and he, he sort of managed to stick it on. Right, he stuff. didn't wash it off or anything. Yeah, I'm he sure he'd give it a bit of a rinse, but um, <laughs> but I'm just saying how. Nonsense. You know, you've got to make a joke out of stuff, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, it's bollocks. If you're a doctor. Okay, that's good. So where was the joke in that story? Well, at what point did- when- I thought this was a story well, about how jo doctors have a sense of humour. Yeah, when well, they did, did at the end, they sort of laughed and he sort of said, oh, there you go, it's back on, but, oh, good job we- you know, the bin men didn't come or whatever. <laughs> and, they, and they made a joke out of it. <laughs> I've never heard such nonsense! <laughs> I've never God, heard just made such that joke nonsense! Right, Carl, let's do a competition, chance to win, uh, some of the product that we've got out that Carl doesn't wanna, um, talk about, cause he's too lazy. No, it's not that. If it's um, mm. well if you do wanna, uh, win a copy of this book, um, Ricky Gervais presents The World of Carl Pilkerton, it's by, um, all three of us, uh, and it's some of the, uh, uh, musings and thoughts and ideas from the, the podcast. Carl has, uh, um, got some new theories, it's illustrated throughout. Um, by Carl Pilkington. By Carl Pilkington. It's got, um, excerpts from the diary. They're genuine, aren't they? They're just, they're photostatted things from the diary that yeah. people haven't seen, and it's fascinating, Reed. Um, we can sign that. We can also give you a, uh, copy of this new three-disc set, CD of the best of, is it the first series of the Ricky Gervais show? Yeah, yeah, well, it's got everything, actually. It's, uh, it's got the whole, um, twelve first series that, that we did with, the, um, Guardian Unlimited, the award-winning, record-breaking, podcast. Um, it's also got, uh, some excerpts, if you want the, the best of, you can put that on. Um, and it's got, uh, one hour of new material, which we recorded especially for it, but you can't get that, you can't buy that in the shops till the 30th of November. And I'll throw in the new Flanimals book, Flanimals of the Deep. It's the third in the trilogy, Carl. Are you excited about that? Yeah. And the, the question is, uh, do you want them? Okay, that's the quiz question. That's the quiz question, yeah. Okay. Is if that you a trick question? No, 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 no. It's just the, f the first correct answer. Oh. I'm not going to worry what the correct answer is, but do you want them? And think what you know. If you do want them, then that might you know do, do, you know what's the answer? Uh, and you can send that to podcast at rickygervais dot com. Include your name and address, and if you're the lucky winner, then we will send this stuff to you if you want it. And it's the first come, first serve, okay? So the first correct answer to the question, do you want it? Do you want that stuff? Do you want, do you want, do you want Flanimals and the CD box set and the book and that? Okay, well if you know the correct answer to that, podcast at rickygervais.com. Good luck, everyone. Well, thank you for listening to the first of these three special podcasts, uh, with Guardian Unlimited. Um, the next one is out for Thanksgiving, um, 23rd of November. We don't actually celebrate Thanksgiving. What is Thanksgiving? Uh, it's a, it's a thing in America. 
Right. Uh, it's like the, it's like the big holiday. It probably probably rivals Christmas. Probably bigger than Christmas in. Well, what do we do here? But we don't celebrate here, do we? So it's the, it's a day, isn't it? Yeah, but no one's going to remember that, are they? Twenty third November, they can remember, can't they? Yeah, but it's nice. Well, they should remember that's one day before my birthday if we're going to celebrate anything. Okay. Well, it, 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 we've got this one. The next one's the twenty third November, and the next one's the twenty fifth of December. Can we? C c well, how can I remember twenty fifth of December? Um, well, Christmas. That's fair enough. That's Christmas, but Thanksgiving we don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Okay. The next one's out about the twenty third of November. Then yeah, after that, about the twenty fifth. Day before my birthday. Oh, they're going to remember that, aren't they? It's Steve Day in Bristol. Yeah. Anyway. If you've enjoyed this special edition of the Ricky Gervais Show, the entire back catalogue is still available on iTunes under audiobooks, by the way, not podcasts, audiobooks, and you can get everything we've ever done. I'd like to thank the guys at Positive Internet for hosting this. Those great guys, what would we do without them? So, it's uh, goodbye from me, goodbye from Steve Merchant, bye, and goodbye from Carl Pilkington. Bye. Welcome to the second in this series of three special free podcasts with The Guardian Unlimited, with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. These are a special thank you to all the fans that bought the last few uh, podcasts we've done. Still available on iTunes. <laughs> you can't miss it. It's at number one in the charts. Carl, it's Thanksgiving. I don't know what that means. I don't know why we're doing this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slightly in agreement with you, actually. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving. Well, no, but it was, uh, you know, the arbitrary dates are easy to remember for some people. <laughs> Halloween, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Easy to remember. I don't think Thanksgiving is. Well, it is in America, and- Yeah, yeah but I have never, I couldn't tell you, I mean, I've, I've been around for thirty odd years. I've never celebrated one of them. I've never done anything about it. No one has. I don't know any relation who has ever said, are you popping around for Thanksgiving? <laughs> I don't know, when is it? I've never done it. Because it's not celebrated in this so country. So why are we celebrating it? <laughs> We're not celebrating it. It's an arbitrary date to do a podcast. I just don't know what it's about. I mean, before you celebrate something. You don't celebrate you know. Halloween, do you? But we did that. No, but it annoys me how people don't actually know what the occasion is, but they celebrate it. Kids don't know what Christmas is about these days. It's just like, oh, I'll get some toys. That's yeah, what I mean. So Thanksgiving, it's just another one, isn't it? It's another event. Okay, why do you celebrate Christmas then? Uh, cause everyone else does. You can't get Brilliant. away from it. I'd quite happily block it out. If I did a new diary, I'd leave out that date and go, come on, let's, let's get on, let's do something good. Well, you, well, you go on holiday every two weeks. What's that to celebrate? No, I'm just but saying- But people need a little break, don't they? they you know, it's a great- He moment. doesn't. Christmas is a great time. Even yeah, if but, you but, take but away the problem the is, bit. what I don't like about it is everyone's off at the same time, so everything stops. See, what I'd do is, I'd say to people, do you like Christmas? Yeah. Right, when do you want to celebrate this year? And let them do it whenever they want. Well, that's ridiculous. Why? As long as you're remembering baby Jesus, does it matter when you're remembering him? But I- I-, I I I'm an atheist and I celebrate Christmas because it's a time of year where everyone is off and everyone gets together. Yeah, I know. I don't I care what they call it. The fact that we're all doing it at the same time is what's nice about no, it. There's it's a not. sense of community. No. National community. Everyone shuts down by about December 15th or whatever. And then it doesn't get going again till like January the 6th. But what is it you're missing out on during this period? Just it's like two weeks there. That's n I mean that bit between Christmas and New Year, you might as well delete that out of the calendar. Yeah, because heaven forbid you can't pop down the library because it's closed. <laughs> <laughs> all, all that reading you've got to catch up on. <laughs> I'm just saying that we're wasting time. What, I've what never are you seen, doing that? <laughs> I've never seen anyone on this planet waste as much time as you. If say... you're not on holiday, you're following insects around the fucking park. <laughs> so don't give me that shit. I'm just saying that I, I, I don't like fun. <laughs> Never a true well, word said! there sense. we are, we've got to the nub oh, of it here. You don't like are. fun. This is true, you don't like no, anything. Christ almighty, you oh. do not like fun. No, <laughs> organised, organised fun. I hate that thing, I've said it a bit before about, you know, it's that date, that's what you've got to do. <laughs> Will there come a time when someone goes, we've done it, we've done enough of this? Will there come a time, and for Thanksgiving? Possibly. Oh, yeah, possibly, yeah, things, things change, don't they? And you'll be happy then, will you? Uh, in five thousand years' time, when we all worship Glong, yeah, we uh, just make a change. That's that's all I want. Because you know I've been keeping a diary. Yeah. Uh, what did you have in the calf yesterday, for example? We can read about that later. It's just like Ricky said. Oh, are you gonna are you gonna do you know another one next year? And I wouldn't because it's you know you do the same stuff every year, don't you? It's set up the same way. January. <laughs> February. It's the same thing. It's the same routine. Yeah. And, and if you're writing in Why a book- Why are they always doing them in the same order, those <laughs> months? Oh, it sickens me, Rick. Oh. I tell you. 
<laughs> you see, it's just easy to put stuff off whilst we've got this calendar, whereas if you didn't have a date, you'd have to do everything straight away. What? Say if I was in charge. Oh, mm. God, heaven forbid, yeah. And yeah. someone said, that building needs knocking down. Yeah. It's dangerous. If we didn't have a calendar, you go, mm, let's do it now then. Whereas, because we've got a calendar, it's easy to say, next Wednesday. <laughs> His theories oh. are amazing! I mean, I don't know, maybe he is a real visionary thinker. Maybe he is free- you know what I, what I like about him though? All his- all his thoughts, they're about- they're about freedom of expression in a strange way. He's not burdened by anything. He just goes, well why do we think like that? But he who? questions everything. Like a true visionary scientist. But who gets a diary come Christmas time, which I know you hate, you yeah. know, for the next year and thinks you f- wow, what a piece of oh, shit. Now I've got to I'm put just some gonna do stuff when I want to do it. I'm gonna take out next Wednesday. <laughs> There's no such thing no. as next Wednesday. No, but what I'm saying is, before the year's even started, I know in that new diary I can whiz forward to December 25th and I go, another Christmas. I don't know what you mean. So everything's set in stone before I've even started the new year. It's like, oh, Pancake Tuesday, that's coming up. <laughs> so what? someone's already Remember decided- Remember Tuesday? Someone's already <laughs> decided. Someone's already telling me what I'm doing on half of the year. <laughs> But, oh, but just all those nice. pages oh, are blank, yeah. Carl, for you to fill up with stuff. Oh, guess what? Guess where my birthday is again? 23rd <laughs> of September. I'm just saying, move them about a bit, move the days about a bit so it doesn't get predictable. But when we- when we change Pancake Tuesday to, uh, Thursday, Thursday. do we tell anyone else? Um, yeah, they do an advert on the telly. Just saying, don't forget to buy your pancake mix. Uh, but so why? Carl, why not just stick with what we've already got? Because if you know Actually, it's fine with everyone that, I anyway- I I wouldn't put a date on that pancake day anyway. Just have it when you want. <laughs> have it when you want. There's no big deal. You've got to make them yourself. It's not like some place is opening to do it. Have them when you want. I don't know why that's got a special day on it. Sick of it. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, Thanksgiving is based on uh, new settlers to a new land surviving. Yeah. And, uh, I was talking to Carl in the week, we were talking about new settlers and everything, and I was thinking, imagine if you, uh, had to, um, start a new settlement now, okay? There was something wrong with the world, okay? The world was kaput, mm -hmm. okay? And we found another planet. So, Carl, if you had to go to a new planet, don't worry about starting life again. They've got sort of like these breeder clones that adore that, but you can choose six people from this world to take to start this whole new world, okay? So you need, you know, as I say, you don't need to So worry what's about, happening here? Is this, is this... It's gonna be wiped out, okay? It's gonna be wiped out, but there's enough on this spaceship for you and five other people, okay? And they've got them there, they've got these, they've got these sort of breeder clones there, so it's gonna be populated. You're gonna have the workers, the drones, everything like that, but you wanna take six, I suppose, sort of, um, uh, world lords to teach, to lay down the politics, the, the, the teachings, the laws, the government. I hate okay. This. I'd hate it. Um, and how long have I got to make a decision on it? Uh, till the end of this podcast. Right, go. Who do you take? Who's the first person you take and why? Uh, and where, where are we going? We, Mars? <sighs> okay, so a, a planet where there's a, a, a an atmosphere. I've got to know where I'm going because I've got uh, to sell it to the people who I'm asking. There's no point when okay, I go. Are you it's, coming it's, with me? Where are you going? I don't know. It's <laughs> just like this world. There's there's oxygen. There's seas. There's rivers. There's forests. There's animals. Okay, but we're going to populate it with uh, the human race, and you can choose six people to lord over this new uh, kingdom. You want the best people for the job. Yeah. So who, who's the first person? Probably, um, Patrick Moore. Why? <laughs> why? Why would you take Patrick Moore? Just because he he knows knows his way about up there, doesn't he? He'll know the way. So just just have him. I think that will whoever I pick next, if they see that he's going, they'll go right. You know, it's going to be a long Moore's journey. As it is. You don't want someone who's going to be going. Is it left here? Is it right? Or, or, do you know what I mean? And he could play the xylophone on the journey. But, but, is a, Carl, uh, is more the most useful person to have if you've only got six, because he may be very useful getting to the planet, no, but, but once you got there- No, but I've always wanted to meet him as well. I've always wanted a chat, and that'd be a good chance, wouldn't it, when I'm in a rocket? How long's it taking to get to Mars? I don't know, a, a year. That's what I mean, No, it's so. not Mars, it's somewhere else, okay, so it's a year to get there and then- Yeah, well, that's what I mean, so it's a good chance to have a chat with him, uh, okay. about stuff. Um, 
So Matt and Moore, I think he'd be up for it as well, to be honest. Yeah. Um, I think, I think, you know. Well, why do you, why do you think that? Just because he's spent his whole life talking about what's going on up there, isn't it? And yet he's never been. And I feel sorry for him. You know, most people, when, they, when they're into something, they get to go to a place, don't they? Sure. Uh, for people who uh, don't know who Patrick Moore is, he's um, an 80 year old uh, <laughs> astronomer. Yeah, that's what I mean. So let him have, a, have a bit of a good life. So Moore's on board. Yeah, Patrick Moore. He's. He's on. Right, out five others. Four others now. Uh Jamie Oliver. Why <laughs> why would you take Jamie Oliver? <laughs> just food and that. You just thought you need someone because they say that like you uh you know, you can feel down if you don't eat. Um He couldn't convince eight year olds to eat a carrot. What's he going to do in this brave new world? They're all going to be on Turkey Twizzlers. I think he's he's got the right attitude. He wouldn't be faffing about. Remember, <laughs> we've we've landed now on this new world. Yeah. I don't know what it's like. The people who listen, maybe I love Jamie Oliver. I think he's great. Yeah. But he wouldn't be in my five people to start a new world. That's all I'm saying. Nor would Patrick Moore because <laughs> he knew the way. <laughs> well, what chef would you pick? I wouldn't <laughs> pick a chef. Why would I pick a chef? Because you want someone who's going to like I say, food's important when you're low. There's nothing better. If you are a bit fed up, there's nothing better than having a good- But Carl, I don't think you've quite grasped that these people have to start civilization again. They have to yeah. be wise, wise people who can make the laws. Yeah. And before you do all that, you need a good meal. So, th Jamie Oliver, he'll be- that's his job. It's like, when we get there, that's when he kicks in. Right. right He's okay. the first one, really, can I suggest gets going. Can Just to save two places on Patrick Moore and Jamie Oliver, take a map and a cookbook. <laughs> Okay, who's number three? What sort of state is this world in? Does it need- Oh, it's, it's gonna take a fucking gardener. It's- yeah. it's like the- it's- uh, It's the world but new. It's the- it's that- exactly. It's the world but new, untouched by humans. There's- there's been no fossil fuels burnt, no machinery, no wars. Just this Garden of Eden. And you? Patrick Moore and Jamie <laughs> Oliver pitch up. <laughs> Plus, who else, Carl? Go now. First thought. Attenborough. <laughs> oh, God. Again, he's a genius, and he's a, you know he's a, he's a bit of a hero of mine. But I don't know if we need Attenborough. Just because I reckon if it's a new world, you're saying it's the same, but they always say, don't they, that all worlds are different. So I'd want him there, just to sort of. When we're roaming around, because we'll all stick together for a bit, won't we? Mm. Uh, yeah. When we're roaming around, then they'll be sick of the sight of you. Uh, they go, let's lose Carl. But you've got two men so far who've got a combined age of about <laughs> 150. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> if you're starting a brave new world, dare I say it, not going to be around very long. <laughs> Shouldn't you be taking some younger, fresher blood? No, not really, because they haven't lived. Have they? These have lived, and they'll they, they can so and they're useful. Like I say, Patrick Moore's done his bit. He's got us there. Uh, Oliver has cooked us a dinner. Day two, I reckon we'd end that on day one there. We'd have a dinner, we'd all have a chat. I don't think you're thinking of the future. I it's think a you're camping trip. I think you're thinking of the journey and then the first night. <laughs> ah! Okay, okay. So, so you've got David two, Attenborough, yeah. you've got Patrick Morton, you've got Jamie Oliver, <laughs> you've got two other places. I get the feeling that you're not so much recruiting people for a new world as I'm a celebrity get me out of here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as a dinner party with <laughs> yeah. people you'd like to meet that you've seen on the telly. <laughs> oh. Uh, Come on in two more. I'd text someone who's a bit daft. Just so- No, you don't need to, Carl. That's covered, believe us. Yeah, no, believe no, that's what I mean, though. I don't want them having to go at me going, why are you here? I'd put point the attention somewhere else <laughs> to text someone else who'd sort of wind them up. So who's I'm, that then? Paul Denan or someone like that. <laughs> it really is. I'm a celebrity. <laughs> so you've got you've got Patrick Moore, you've got David Attenborough, you've got Jamie Oliver, and Paul Denan. <laughs> and they're, starting, they're starting life again. <laughs> okay then, brilliant. Oh god. Right, one more. This is uh, amazing. This is uh, this going to be. I'd love to go back and visit this in a thousand years. What teachings they laid down. <laughs> Oh, God. Dunno, it'd have to be, uh, a woman, I think. You've got to have a woman in that little group, haven't you? Who's... 
could have another another woman chef or. <laughs> He's <laughs> mainly eating. It's it's mainly eating. Oh, he's got no. that covered with armor, but no, no, I he's got to take Nigella in case he's in a <laughs> cream cake kind of mood. Oh god! Oh god! Delia Smith was furious. She packed her bags and everything. <laughs> or a nurse. Now you're thinking, Abby Titmus. <laughs> Carl, I know you like to be kept abreast of all the latest breaking science news. Did you read recently about the blind mice that they have been able to make see again? And, um, hopefully they're, they're, whatever they did, which allowed these mice to be able to see again, they're hoping to be able to do with humans in maybe about ten years' time. Or at least begin tests in ten years' time, which is pretty impressive, isn't it? How many, uh, how many, um, are these, uh, mice did they experiment on? <laughs> Three, probably. Right. They were, hmm. It wasn't taking place in a farmhouse, was it, at all, with I didn't read the intricacies of the Did they story. have tails? Did they still have their tails? The three blind mice? Because I- yeah. They're- I don't know, I guess well, I'm, uh, not, yeah. I'm not sure. Well, okay. what's your concern? Well, right? I think I know what happened there. Really? Yeah. I think the farmer's wife probably, uh, got annoyed right. at them running well, after why? her. Right. <laughs> uh. But how could they run after her? Because they're blind. I don't know. I think they used a sense of smell and hearing. They could hear her. Uh, clogs. <laughs> and they followed the sound of the big fat clogs. <laughs> right. But, uh, you know, they got their comeuppance. <laughs> they lost their tails. So now they're blind with no tails. Is uh, that I, not the story? I don't, I think you've confused, um, okay. another more recent story. Okay. With, with that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll leave that then, then. I don't know. Carl, thoughts though? That extraordinary, isn't it? To be able to, I mean, to be able to cure blindness would it, be a it, remarkable it, achievement in science. It is, but it's just that thing how they say they've done it on mice and what have you. Yeah. If I was blind and I went in for the meeting with mm. the doctor, yeah, and they said, "Do you want yours doing?" And then they said, "Like, mm. I've done it on mice. That wouldn't be good enough for me." I'd say, "Look, when the blind fella gets in, don't say we've done it on mice. Just say we've done this on eyes." Because <laughs> if he goes, "What eyes?" Just say, "Just a pair of eyes." <laughs> yeah. As soon as you say mouse's eyes, it's like, well, it's, n it's not the same, and it no. sort of it would make me go, J "I'll leave it." Yeah. And then you, you, you wake up and you can see, but you've got very tiny eyes right in the-, uh, the You've put in my eyes! <laughs> I'm scared of cats! It's just <laughs> eyes. I think I just don't like having my eyes messed with, and even if it was blind, I, I just- I, I wouldn't like it. Right. Uh, and I think mine are more active than most, my eyes. What do you mean? <laughs> um, well I went for a what's her name, Steve, you don't know, I, I've, I've had mm. uh, problems with my legs. Oh. <sighs> Christ almighty. He's the same- what are you, 33? He's a hypochondriac. And you talk like you're a seven-year-old Honestly, man. the slightest thing, he's got time off work for this. We went to the dentist three times in one week, he goes, now his leg's rubbed two times a week for no, some I reason. No, I don't. In and out of the kidney hospital, and they're going, there's no kidney stone, Mr. Pilton. He's going, oh, right. Christ mm. almighty, do some fucking work. No, the thing is, I've been- in the last, like, thirty-odd years, I've been working hard, and I've let my body get run down a bit. How have you- like, you're thirty- what are you? Thirty- thirty-three. Right, thirty-three. Sorry to start off with such a hard question. <laughs> but how have you been working for thirty years? <laughs> well, I just have. I sort of- uh, I got on with it. At three? <laughs> at three? No, I'm Well, just you didn't saying. get on with anything at school, did you? Because you were just <laughs> pissing about. Yeah. You weren't working yeah. out there. What was the first job you got? How old were you? Uh, I was fifteen. Right, okay, so you've been working for fifteen years then, okay, good, <laughs> Yeah, but right. I had my paper around when I was ten, didn't I, and that was- that was hard graft. That's why I'm bald and that, getting up at half four. <laughs> it all adds up, doesn't it? All adds up. So anyway, uh, mm. when I kicked my height when I was a kid- <laughs> He always says this, eh? Like it's a classic story that everyone should know. Everyone knows, and also right. the phrase, kicking my own height. Yeah. No, Explain so. what you mean. Just kicked me out when I was when I was kick a kid. Your, no one understands. You Carl. kicked your leg up to I the height that you were at that time. Yeah, yeah. So I if kicked you were, my height. It's not a well-known phrase. You can't just go. I kicked me out. So you were so you're four and a half foot, and you've put your toe up into the air four and a half feet by kicking. Yeah, but I, I landed on my back. Right. Okay. <laughs> I, I Imagine land. seeing that in the playground. They go <laughs> get Carl Pilkington to kick his eye. I bet he falls over like a fucking penguin. He wasn't penguin. in the playground. My dad got me to do it in the garden. Brilliant. But so why? <laughs> why did he you fall over? Tickets. The neighbours were cracking <laughs> yeah. up. Yeah. Why did you fall over? Did did your did you hit I yourself just in the I head? I didn't have to kick the height. I mean, my leg got high up, but I was that chuffed that I got that high. I didn't think of putting my leg down again. <laughs> <laughs> Why did look? 
<laughs> like, what the fuck did that look to, like? He's got to think it all through. I <laughs> thought it was automatic. <laughs> no, it, like, you, you, it stayed there. You, you sort of stay oh, balanced. Christ almighty. But you didn't almighty. think, well, I'm loving this. This is brilliant, but I, what should I do now? I, <laughs> I've got my leg up. I'll just keep yeah. it up. Whoa! <laughs> it looked like a Hitler salute with his leg. What? what were you doing? So anyway, I landed on my back. Yeah. And, uh, and I did some damage, I think. Yeah, and it's because definitely. of that. You sure you didn't land on your head? And it's because of that, like, all like, all them years and what have you, yeah. I've had like a trapped nerve in my leg. Right. So I thought, right, now's the time to have it done, because when you get older, I mean it was a kidney stone thing, once you've seen, once you've sort of looked at, you know, death and what have you, mm. uh, it just makes you think, got to start looking after you your body. Do you think you could die of the, the uh, slightly bad leg that you've had for 15 years? <laughs> Well, you just- Think that'll eventually kill you? <laughs> well, well it could do if I can't run away from danger quick enough. Right. Again, you're thinking <laughs> of Jurassic Park coming true. Well, whatever though, I'm just saying, you've yeah. got to look after yourself. You yeah. know, if there's anyone listening you out always there who's, who's got a problem, get it sorted. I'll tell you what though, if you have to fight off danger and you kick them, put the leg back down <laughs> immediately after. <laughs> so anyway, so I went to see this fella, to uh, like a professional uh, leg rubber. A um, professional leg rubber. Yeah. And he's uh, he sort of said, uh, a few things that were quite interesting. Mm. Remember that time when we had a chat on the last lot of, like, podcasts? I said, am I in charge of my brain? Or is my brain in charge of me? Yeah, do you remember what I said? It's the most stupid thing you've ever said. Yeah, well, well, listen to this then. So oh. I go and see this leg rubber. Professional yeah. leg rubber, yeah. Right, and he is professional. Yeah. Right, Remember, so a leg rubber. You haven't said doctor at any <laughs> yeah. point in this conversation. He's a leg rubber. So, so this, this, whatever, however profound this is, it came from a man who is self-confessed professionally leg rubbing. Not just leg. Does he, he do back, left and right? Or? Back, back rubbing as well. He does it all. Right. 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 So I'm in there, rubber. and I didn't mention about how I thought my brain was, you know, was in charge of me and stuff. Uh, I'm lying there. He's bending me about and what have you. Mm. The first problem he came across is that my nerves aren't long enough. Right. My body. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> my nerves aren't long enough for your body. He yeah. was lifting my legs up and I was going, right, don't, whoa, stop that a minute, that's certain that. He's like, what do you mean? He said, I've only got them like, like just about. Well, that's your tendons. No, no, but your nerves are in your legs as well. And your tendons don't hurt, it's your nerves that kick in. It's your nerves that make you well, go. Yeah, but they hurt because your tendons are being overstretched. Well, I'm just telling you what he said. Right? So, so he lifted the leg up and I went, right, well, stop Was this above a laundrette, this surgery? <laughs> No, it's a proper place. He had like towels and all that on. Oh, the okay. <laughs> oh, he's got towels. Oh, there. okay, yeah. yeah. So, um, definitely laundry. So, so I'm lying there. <laughs> Other people's towels. <laughs> he's got uh, towels halfway through his pants. Yeah, bras. halfway through. He said, "You got twenty p over for the dryer." <laughs> okay. So I'm lying there, and he lifts the leg up, yeah. and I'm like, "Oh, that hurts a lot." Mm. So he said, "Oh yeah, short nerves." And I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "You, you know, you're you're outside of the body." Is longer than your inside. Right. He doesn't <laughs> sound like a doctor. He does not sound like the a doctor. Outside of your body is yeah. longer than the inside. <laughs> So he, he he had me lying on my front and what have you, and he was sort of crushing me back. Right. And he was going, does that hurt? I said, yeah. It was like 48 quid, this as well. Mm -hmm. Putting me through all this pain and what have you. Well, you got some good advice, though. He said, you're pretty stressed. And I said, yeah. So it's, you know, I have quite a bit of stress in my life. And I explained to him about the kidney stones and that. I said, oh, mm. you know, that, that's that. He went, oh, shut <laughs> the fuck <laughs> up. <laughs> he probably said that. He said, that's where you were probably got a lot of tenseness. And a lot of tenseness. Mm. Is that the phrase he used as yeah, a trained no, professional a, rubber? He's a doctor. He's definitely a doctor. So anyway, yeah. he said, do you relax much? You, you know, haven't you got any Lenore, have you? <laughs> I want these <laughs> sheets to come out nice, nice and soft. He said, do you, uh, you know, you should learn to meditate or something. He said, because you, you know, you, you're all tensed up. Mm. We're living in a stressful world, as I tell me mm. about it. So when I was telling him that I have problems relaxing, mm. he said, oh, he said that you're obviously the sort of person it was a Who's gullible enough to spend 46 quid for this? Oh, hokum. He said, you're the sort of person whose brain is in charge of them, rather than them being in charge of the so brain. So all you did was you met a person as stupid as you? <laughs> yeah. No, but I thought it's interesting that he's, he, this is what he does for a living. Yeah. And he picked up, that was the first visit, that's the first, I'd only been there about 22 minutes. Yeah. You get half an hour for 48 quid. Right. But, uh, he, he picked up on that yeah. within like, 
15, no, he saw a right minutes. fucking soccer coming. No, he did pick up on that, yeah. Okay, but anyway, don't, the reason... Don't go to him again. The reason, uh, well, I am doing I've got locked into it. I've got to go at least another three times. Why? And try to get out of it. I don't know. I didn't realise that you have to have a minimum amount of things. So what I'm saying I can't is, wait. Well, what's the wisdom he's going to come up with next week? That'd be brilliant. I would kind of... Yeah. No, but what I'm saying Your is, blood's paranoid. <laughs> we were talking... You've got jealous bones. <laughs> You're the sort of person whose stomach's hungrier than you. <laughs> what absolute fucking nonsense. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know, like, how we were talking about eyes, weren't we? He said, uh, he said, the thing is, you know, you've got to be able to relax and, uh, the way to do it is to focus, right? He said, mm. uh, I said, what do you mean? He said, when you go to sleep- You're the sort of person whose eyes can see further than you can. <laughs> he said, when you go to sleep, uh- Close your eyes and see- <laughs> <laughs> Instead of just leaving but, them open staring at the ceiling. Carl, keep breathing. <laughs> yeah, keep breathing. Close your eyes. You're not dead. It may seem like it, but you're not. You're just asleep. So he said, uh, Oh, fuck me. He said, he said, what you've got to do when you go to sleep, focus on your toe, right? <laughs> okay. He said, and just think about <laughs> nothing else. Me. I said, He's a witch! <laughs> didn't he? Did, did he say you to put a toad under the bed? No, he just said, focus on the toe and, mm. uh, see how you go on and what have you. Next time you come in, let me know. Anyway, I gave this a go, focusing on the toe. Uh, so th what does this mean? You mean you sat in bed staring at your toes? No, this is it. He, he said, like, lie down, shut it. your eyes, and and sort of look at it, sort of thing. So I was lying there, and it just wasn't working because. Oh, Carl, this isn't medicine. Because I was you even were, though you were the thinking eyes, of a finger. Well, no. It, <laughs> <laughs> he found out he was thinking of someone else's toe. Yeah. Next it day someone work. called up and said, Carl, yeah. my toe's better. Yeah. No, the problem was, I was still using my eyes even though I had them shut. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God! Oh, God! Just when I think he's ne he could never come up with something stupid, he pulls that one out of the bag! Right, so, so that, what does that mean? Oh, God! You were still uh, using your face even though you were What does that mean? I was straining them. <laughs> I had them shut, but I was sort of looking yeah. down at me. You were trying to see through your eyelids <laughs> at your toe. Well, I was, oh, I was looking down <gasps> something, and that's where the foot is. <laughs> because of that, I was straining them, and they were stinging, so I had to pack it in. I'm gonna die! I am going to die! Right. So if anything, okay. this guy's just made your stress levels worse. Yeah, that's amazing. That's amazing. Okay, if someone out there is listening, um, could, could you put in order the top, uh, ten most stupid things Carl's ever said? And to me, that is number one. That is now number- well that- that's overtaken, uh, uh, is your brain in charge of you or is your, are you in charge of your brain? Oh, that's amazing.